I throw up the plate. And then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. And then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. And then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. And then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. Niggas don't know what to think. Don't I get money, you change. What you thought we was the same? Still stay away from them clones. Niggas better leave me alone. Talking about niggas is low. Who? Run with niggas who don't know you. Whoa. I made that zagging one city to city. You niggas not hot in your state. If it was money to get a hit, Henny, we get it and never complain. Same go for the game. And we split it up all the same. I can't really eat unless they straight. Cause we go way back in the day. My day runs from back in the day. They still hang around me today. You wanna come run us, you can't. I'm rolling up loud, it's great. But mama, she bad but complain. Cause I'm too in love with my dreams. And I gotta get on the plane. And go get this money with cash. I draw up the plate. And then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang. The bank, and it be all in my drink. You niggas is stupid, you think that should change. You not even hot in your gang, ain't nothing even hot about your gang. You niggas be lying about same, be posting the pictures of guns for the fame. Niggas just look at me different now. Say that's your man, but he a clown. But fuck around with the fuck around. Little nigga, you should cut it out. Me and my niggas take different routes. Punch a bitch nigga all in his mouth. Hold up, my nigga, we different now. I need a raw, this is my style. I get a check today, I spent it all tomorrow. I get a bitch today, she probably a foreign model. Yeah, yeah. I get a check today, I spent it all tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I'm with my gang today, tomorrow never promise. OG, I draw up the plate, and then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang, gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate, and then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang, gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate, and then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang, gang. situation for us in detail and we're gonna review it i make them shiver these get weak 
Whenever I'm around, they see me walk. They hear me talk. I make them feel like their God ain't real. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. That mic flip, though. Hands off the merchandise. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another edition of the Pocket Locker Podcast. I am your host with the most all the way from the East Coast. And as always, folks, I am in... Airplane mode. Oh, gang, we have got a uh, very important show lined up for you. Uh, we are going to be bringing to a culmination this Dr. Price situation that it feels like this saga has been going on forever. And uh, I have not seen Derek's video, so I, I don't really know what uh, he says about it. But my main man, James Apperson, tagged me in and said, Jay, you want to get on this? Oh, of course, because a lot of y'all know myself. I tried to sit down with Dr. Price when I heard he was maybe trying to apologize and make his way back into the community. Boy, that didn't work out. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're going to follow up with all of that. Before we do, let's go ahead and get into our communion. Y'all already know the drill. Please raise your glasses and hold on to your asses. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the flying man, all glory and honor is yours who fly for our sins forever and ever. You may drink. Mm. Great, great, great. Carrie Ann, thank you so much for using the communion command. All right, that was our communion hymn. Let us go ahead and get into our communion song. This one comes to us courtesy of Foy Vance. It is called Where Everybody Knows Your Name. Dublin, and he's going to play us out. Foy, you're going to play what to finish us up? Do you know what? I don't know the name of this song, actually, but I know the song, and so will you. Oh, I look forward to this. <laughs> Foy Vance, take it away. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, I got you Melody Joy today. first. Takes everything you got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see. Troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Well, all those nights when you got no lights And the check is in the mail And your little angel on the cottard by its tail All right, I got Carrie Ann Chrysler in second You said fiancé didn't show Well, sometimes you want to go Where everybody knows your name and I got gold and onyx filled. And you're Welcome. always glad they came. Third, 2,500 pocket change. You want to be where you can see. Troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Well, you get out of bed and the coffee's dead. The morning isn't looking bright You shrink right off to your opine He doesn't even write Your girlfriend says she's not a girl Be glad there's one place in the world Where everybody be knows good to go. your name You want to be where you can see Troubles are all the same You want to go where everybody knows your name You want to uh, be where James and I are streaming see. together So you can Troubles see the stream on either same. channel You want to go where everybody knows your name Vance. Most common word coming in by text boy is goosebumps. Believe it or not, we've had that repeatedly across the whole series. <laughs> nice, nice, um, nice. If you want to see Foy. All right, gang. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So, uh, yeah, James and I are streaming together. It just makes it way easier than re-uploading, you know, trying to have a conversation together. And, man, there's no reason for us not to just straight up collaborate. So you can see the channel. You can see the stream on either channel. Uh, if you're if you're really concerned about it, uh, remember that YouTube counts views for 30 seconds. So uh, if you spend 30 seconds here and 30 seconds there, you you can give a view to both channel. But otherwise, we really don't care where you watch. Uh, but yeah, I think this is important, and um, we're going to be discussing uh, the Bob Price situation, uh, particularly by responding to. Derek's video about it and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it I want to start by thanking everybody that's in gather with me. I have Stephanie James UC love and none believer uh, Particularly Stephanie and James are on stage with me right now. So you should be able to hear them uh, but yeah, gang, please get in Gather. We really uh, want to encourage people to use Gather as a preferred way to watch and engage with streams. You can be with us sort of behind the scenes beforehand or afterwards, and it's where we hang out. It's really interactive. Um, I've actually been reading a lot of research on Gather um, for my proposal, and um, Gather really transforms online interactions. For instance, you know, students 
uh, feel like they have a lot more agency uh, and that gathers a lot more interactive and it makes them feel m much more like they're actually interacting in person. So um, click the link in the description. Like I always say, yeah, click the link in the description. It's also pinned in the chat if you'd like to join us. Um, I see UC Love and Nunbeliever out here. Appreciate all y'all. Um, and, and do let us know if you're having any issues. All right, so James, can you hear me? I didn't unmute you guys. Boom. James, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Uh, I think Stephanie's here too. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, is there anything you want to say before we start this? No, this is fire. I can't wait to jump in. All right, let's do it. All right, let me read this. I've been, Ed is Robert Price's friend who wishes I was dead. Real dramatic edit there, Derek, really like it. Uh, I've been watching your channel for a few months until yesterday. I was totally unaware of what you did regarding Dr. Price, yet you still have his videos up. I want, I just want to let you know I am absolutely sickened to the very pit, we think, of my stomach. You're not a poor black kid, poor black child, and you never were. And I am the same age as you, so I'm not some boomer reciting drivel. It's a shame you didn't OD years ago. So we did an entire stream about this, so let me just let it roll. But sickening. Absolutely sickening. Up here's another one. I just came across a channel that my cousin-in-law from the ADL shared with me. What's the ADL, James? I actually don't know. Okay, it's a channel on a neo-Nazi bitch it ripoff called goemtv.com. There's one channel specifically called Myth Vision and Gnostic Informing Clips to deconvert white Christians. <laughs> right. the ADL higher up. AD ADL is the Anti-Defamation League. Ah, thank uh -huh. you. My cousin-in-law from the ADL shared with me. It's a channel on the neo-Nazi ripoff called... There's one channel specifically using... I'm just saying, though, like, shout out to, Nist uh, to Myth Vision and Gnostic Informant for getting in the anti-defamation league circles like yo like could you imagine yo, you know how proud i would be if people in the anti-defamation league circles like yeah you need to check out this pocket like 86 he's really going ham on bigotry and narcissism oh, yeah. like james come on now that's an mm -hmm. accomplishment um yeah, it is. <laughs> as the adl higher-ups admit behind closed doors without christianity their quote ass is grass to use their own words so i'm thinking they're Really, as a message to Gnostic Informant and Derek Lambert, be careful with the giddiness in which you destroy Christianity. You have a responsibility with the content you put out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So here he's complaining, really, that, look, you guys are hitting so hard with the facts and the logic that you are poised, he thinks at least, to destroy Christianity with, with facts and logic and reason and ethics. And he's like... It's Be careful what that. you wish for, right? If it's, you... wor it's worse than that. It's worse than that. What if you, you destroy Christianity, what will the Jews ever do? <laughs> I mean, you know, the right, ADL is so... basically saying without Christianity, our ass is grass. Okay, so if you destroy Christianity, then I guess the Jews go away too. Well, that's the, Christianity... that's the subtext of this stupid tweet. All right, so he sees Christianity as the great white hope of not just the world, but Jews, right? You guys you guys need Christianity. I'm not sure why he thinks anybody needs Christianity. Right. It's kind of like being told that you need hemorrhoids, but and, and Ebola, but okay. So he's trying to say, like, say, without Christianity, the, the Anti-Defamation League is screwed. And... Right. Once the and, you and, and you atheist assholes are going to are going to hurt the your biggest allies. And then we're gonna the, the, the Jews. Yeah. And we're gonna be and then we're gonna be fucked because we're not gonna have them to help us fight neo Nazis. 
So ironically, it's Myth Vision channels like Myth Vision and Gnostic Informant that are going to be empowering the neo Nazis without Christianity to sort of broker the treaty in between. Look, it's not... pretzel logic, but it's all they have. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing where he's drawing this line of logic. I'm I I don't I don't I don't follow this at all. But it does. It, if the dog whistle is so high, even the dogs can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's true. It's, 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 really it's really true. Um, what? What? But it does speak to a real desperation, right? That when people deal with this content, there really is desperation. And and I'm I'm of a mind, uh, really becoming across the board where we should actually embrace this. Like one of the things I, I really want to change about the tenor and tone of my content and, and really the way we educate, especially in the sciences, is to kind of like be okay with the fact that our content undermines people. I mean, in this community, it's, it's kind of the point. Um, but I just, I just always think it's interesting how you see a lot of secular scholars or content creators often sometimes coaxing Christian Christians like, oh, no, it'll be OK. I, you know, I promise, you know, you can. And and I think they see the challenge in a, in a sense that's kind of like authentic, like they're they're right. This is this this stuff is a threat to Christianity. And and to me, that's the point. Um, so so I don't but it, but it's funny that he thinks this is something to shame us. I'm like, no, this is, we're good with this. Um mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I guess. I guess we'll keep going. Did you? Get, unless you guys said something else. No, I'm. I'm... All right, let's roll some fucked up ass tape. All right, all right. We got another. I forgot we we're still going through this. All right, Derek and Neil are both ex evangelical fundamentalists who were prior drug addicts and criminals. At least one of them spent time in jail. They are also both woke left hearts who would rather. Bob get mugged and murdered in Harlem than say a word about the realities of dangers inherent in coddling the African American population. Right. <laughs> One big problem I see with this scene on YouTube is most are outwardly woke. <laughs> Bob and Ellis are one of the only content creators I have been able to respect once I learned of some of their political positions. All right, y'all. I just want to be clear about what woke is. Because um, it, it, it does matter here. And most of them kind of... Oh, look, Gord, look at my typing. <laughs> most of them kind of get it right when they describe it. Um, woke basically is aware of and actively attentive to important societal facts and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. I, I just always want people to remember that that's what these people are against. They're real, real upset about people being sensitive to and active, actively attentive to important societal issues. Like that, that just, that's a no-no for them. That, that, is, that is what absolutely cannot be tolerated. The other thing is, you know, I've, I've got a record, so fuck it. You know, I've been put in psych words, so fuck it. But it's the kind of disgusting how people go for these type of personal attacks to impugn somebody's character based on just random biases and bigotries that they can count on. Oh, I can count on the fact that if I tell you somebody has a criminal record, you'll think less of them. Oh, I can count on the fact that if I tell you somebody um, you know, has, has, has uh, dealt with addiction, you'll think less of them. Mm -hmm. And it just is a total character assassination for no reason. And I don't understand why 
anybody does this, but but it's it's like a it's like a cheap shot, right? It's it's a total mm-hmm. cheap shot. It's totally irrelevant, and it says far more about the people who do this than the people that they're attacking. Like it says far more about again the fact that you think. You just assume I'm going to think less of a person because they have a criminal record. You just assume I'm going to think less of these people because they've struggled with addiction. And it's ironic because you're wrong. Like, I don't. I literally don't. <laughs> like, it doesn't even mean anything to me. And somebody comes to me, I, right. I, 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 went, I did time in jail. Oh, uh, right. Sure, I don't know what that has to do with trying to figure out what type of ice cream you want to order right now, but thanks for telling me. <laughs> like, I don't, like, it's just if somebody no, asks me, matter. If, somebody, if somebody asks me if I have a criminal record, I'm just going to tell them straight to their face. Face. No, I, I never got caught. <laughs> <laughs> I never got caught, bitch. That's all it is. You know, and if you look in Bibles, Paul has a criminal record. He wrote his shit from jail. Uh, Jesus died with the criminal record. That's why the hell they. That's killed why him. I killed him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He broke the fucking so, law. You know what's it? What's it worth? And it, for, to white Christians to say that if you have ever been in trouble with the law, we should distrust your character. I'm like, well, there goes Jesus and Paul. Then what else you got? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I and yeah, and 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 again, I, I it's just weird. It's it's a very weird thing, and just very hateful, very hateful. Um, and then the dangers inherent in coddling the African American population. I mean, this is just fucking racism right here. I mean, it's just, oh, yeah. just it's just some straight up it's, racism here. You know, it's pretty key to remember that everything that Bull Connor did was perfectly legal. Everything that Adolf Hitler did was perfectly legal. That's all legal. Yeah, yeah. And then the scare yeah. tactic too, right? Yes, yeah, Stephanie, I, I think so, right? And, and and what people don't realize, that's what we're, we're talking about. That's what we're moving towards, right? And you're, in the case of the trans community taking away rights people used to have through legislation, which then means everything they do will be legal, right? It, it is now. It's, it's illegal. illegal. It's legal yeah. to... Then it will be illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's really... It really kind of scary what's going on right now. And, the, and these people have to be deliberately willing to just throw gasoline on the fire. That That's all this is. Right. It's it, gasoline on the fire. It's poisoning the well. It's an ad hom attack. And, and honestly, it's part of the whole fascist totalitarian grift to appeal to people to say, hey, if this person's ever been on the wrong side of the law, we should have destroyed them then. You know, because right. criminals are all disposable, their lives are disposable, and they're lucky. They're lucky that we white Christians running the show didn't just throw them in the fire, didn't just kill them outright. And and so these people should just be glad that they're still alive and shut the hell up. This is the implications of what he's saying, and it, this very much speaks to me in terms of totalitarian ideology. It's it, Dark Matter twenty five twenty five is a brilliant video about this called Totalitarian. Power Corrupts Part 16. And so I just want to play a clip from that if I could. Oh, yeah. Just really, I've got it ready. So Can you share, you should be able to share your screen. I, I think I think it'll work fine to do it that way. So can you see it okay? Uh, yeah, and then I think you may need to make sure you hit share system audio or whatever. It, the box was checked? Yep. Well, let me know if you can't hear sure. it. I'll, I'll stop. If you don't want bad things, that's good. Did you hear it? Can you hit the uh, optimize for video button too on your screen share? Oh yeah, optimize for video. There we go. Kind of annoying right. I should do that. But yeah. All right, perfect. There we go. It's to happen to you, then simply don't break the law. That will be the rationale. Revive our primal hunger for vengeance. Atrocities are not committed by people who think of themselves as evil. They're committed by perfectly normal people who think they're doing something good. The trick is to get them to that point with your propaganda. You need to find the people who will obey. Those who understand that laws can be unjust are the people we need to eliminate early or they will give us problems. We need people who confuse legality with morality. The people who respect the law so much that they follow it blindly, completely Mm -hmm. without discretion or compassion, will happily commit your atrocities, and they'll do it 
with a clean conscience for the rest of their days. They yeah. need only. I mean, there's a lot more to it, but I don't want to. I mean, the whole video is worth watching if anybody gets time later to go check that out. So this is directly relevant to what he's yeah, saying yeah, there. Yeah, he's yeah, drawing yeah, this yeah. line to say, we, the law-abiding good citizens of our of our nation, need to recognize that the their enemy are the people on the other side of that line, people who don't value obedience as a virtue the way that we do. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it, it's a problem, too, in, at many levels of society, just even like the way we accept corporate greed. Like we've been talking about different ways to tax the rich, right, tax the uber wealthy in our country. And one of the things I've recently realized is we should we don't even we don't even make the type of tax evasion they do plainly illegal. Right. Like I um, thought about this and I said, how how much do most of us do to avoid paying taxes each year? And I think if you think about it, the answer is literally zero or close to zero. Right. <laughs> if you own a small business, you might, you know, write some things as business expenses because you're trying whatever. But like literally most people do nothing to change their tax burden. But with rich people, we're like, oh, yeah, you, you know, didn't actually take the money you made this year as income because it'd be taxable income and instead you wrapped it up in untaxable assets then you restructured your company so that um you know the tax burden it has this year wouldn't be hit with the rollover from last year's tax burden right then you restructure like like all this shit they like they literally they literally just commit tax evasion in front of us but it's perfectly legal Right. And so part of what we should do is we should make it illegal to do business jujitsu just to fucking avoid paying taxes. Mm -hmm. But since we don't, people confuse legality with morality and we celebrate that. Right. Literally, Donald Trump goes, oh, I didn't pay taxes. That makes me smart. People go, oh, yeah, it was great. What a great guy. He didn't pay taxes. Do we have so-called patriots? applauding people for not paying tax. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? But it's legal, so it's all good. And that's, and that's, a, that's a, that was a really good illustration of that, I, I think. So this is a great video. Right, and if the same people who were applauding that lived in, an, in, in a country, in a society where the, the wealthiest people were not white, worse yet, not Christian, but definitely not white, they wouldn't be applauding. That all that tax evasion, they'd be saying, "Hey, you know, you're you're just a bunch of grifters not doing your responsibilities." But because the majority of these people are white and people of faith and people of, of conservative ideologies, they're like, "Yay, go team, go tribe, you know, dominate society, show yeah. them that you're not a yes. that you're above everyone and everything." Yes, I could get away with zero point five streams on. Hey, let's have an atheist convention on how to avoid taxes. Right. They be shutting that shit down so fast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. But yeah, this is crazy, y'all. Crazy shit. Woo, Derek is really bringing the heat today. Jacob, yes, you will is. probably live well into your 90s, giving you decades to regret the tone of this video. And I suggest you remove it. I'm not saying that you don't. I guess have, have the, the right, right to run yeah. your channel as you please, but so. And then he says, Edward says he's an autistic Jew. What do you expect? He's an idiot. Wow. Right. Wow. So and, and the, and the algorithm, the algorithm, the algorithm the, potentially, yeah. potentially inappropriate label. <laughs> really, yeah. Maybe you might think. <laughs> potentially inappropriate and and is, is, does this also mean that this is the type of thing that edward the confessor got that popped up and told him before he hit send that this was potentially inappropriate and he'd send anyway or what i have no idea but yeah, we don't know. I, don't, I, I, haven't, I haven't really before. i haven't really you know i'm not up on the latest in in hate fil, fil, hate speech filtration right because i'm not making comments like this but i would love that that's the case right that that it tells you, hey, you might want to think twice about sending this because it's potentially inappropriate. And they're like, nah, we're good. 
<laughs> like, maybe the original wording was worse and that's what he haggled down to exactly <laughs> yeah it first popped up like this is extremely racist and it'll get you booted from the platform and then he like just kept re- <laughs> rephrasing it till he got it to potentially inappropriate he's like alright I'm good with that <laughs> oh man Yeah, I don't know who he's talking about actually in that comment. JHC exists as a forum to set aloft trial balloons for the reader's edification and intellectual stimulation. So this, re- is price re- this is Price right here that you're quoting. Oh, this is Price. Okay, he says, JHC exists as a forum to set aloft trial balloons for the reader's edification and intellectual stimulation. I rejoice to be able to present the radical theories of Barbara Thiering, Ralph Ellis, and Lena Einhorn. I confess I have not found all of their remarkable work convincing, but I do and must respect their work for both its erudition and its bold creativity. The more challenging, the more valuable. I learn very little from books I already agree with, though I gladly read them as well. I fully agree with the philosopher of science, Paul, with philosopher of science, Paul Firebend. The only rule that does not inhibit research is anything goes. More than once, I've initially been whatever. Okay, I just want to say I've always hated this about Bob Price. I've always thought this is ridiculous. Him and others like him venerate what they call erudition. It just means, hey, the more weird out you are, the better. And it's not how scholarship works. Actually, your shit's better when it integrates current knowledge in, 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 in novel ways. Which means a, a sort of inherent conservatism in what's considered productive scholarship. It's like Cliff calls it the crossword puzzle problem, right? Like, if you take a clue, say you have a blank crossword puzzle, right, James? Mm-hmm. And you have kind of an ambiguous clue. That's how crossword puzzles work, right? So, you know, you, 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 you know, it's a, there's things that spray water. Is it hose? Is it taps? Is it, whatever right but you can you can fill in a couple different words so you do and then you got a second clue that intersects with that and all right maybe right but the more and more of this you build the the harder and harder it is to to um you know come up with new solutions right because you have this tangled web right and to start to you know, change a clue here or there means radically changing the board, right? Right. Um, and with these guys, they 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 tend to forget that. Like they like the more and more of the picture we fill in, you know, you got to whatever you add has to take all that into account. And what they think is, we can take some one-off out here idea or clue, and get that and then we're just going to erase everything and redo the whole thing. And I I just it just bothers me because it almost is like not so oh I'm really impressed when stuff disagrees with everything other scholars think. Oh yeah, I'm really impressed when you come up with some weird shit that just over why? It's, it is it's really frustrating. And I know it's probably like the the least of our problems with Bob Price, but it's very concerning that this is how he represents scholarship because it's just not how it works. Right. That anything goes and he even put it in quotes when right. he really wants to draw attention to that. So no standards and no concern for consequence. Anything goes. Right. I'm like, just, that's, that's not how. Ac- ac- yeah. It's not academia. Work. Yeah. It's not, it. it's oh. just not it at all. Um, Dr. Bob, as a Christian who follows your work and loves you as a fellow gentleman of European. Dis- oh my God. European descent, white people. I hope you see this for what it is, anti-Gentile sentiment, pure and simple. 
MythVision and Gnostic Informant are both Shabos Goys who lick the boots of racists oh, like oh, 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 man. There's Tobias some... Singer while demeaning you for having the right political outlooks. They are the enemy, not you. I don't even know what that man. There was some deep ass dog whistling there. Go ahead, Steph, break yeah, it down. It I don't even know what's going on. That was not a dog whistle. That was a, that was a bullhorn. That was absolutely <laughs> outright anti-Semitism. Shabos goys. Do you know what that means? I don't know what that means. I should probably look it up, huh? Um, that's a weird. Am I gonna get like? Ugh. <laughs> You'll no, be put you on a watch get, list. You won't get any weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead. Okay. Look you put on a government list, man. A Shabbos Goy is a non Jew who is employed by Jews to perform certain types of work, Malachi, that Jewish religious law prohibits a Jew from doing on the Sabbath. This includes extinguishing the lighted candles or lamps on Friday night and making fire in the oven or stove on Sabbath. Oh, so 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 it's like a it's like Jew lover, right? Like like uh, yeah, um, uh-huh. you like you're carrying you're carrying water for the Jews. Yeah, uh-huh. Aaron Boy henchman. Yeah. Service dog. yeah. I hope you as a fellow gentleman of European descent. Oh, if that just isn't the white supremacist patriarchy just saying, hey, brother, man, look, look, look. As a white man. See these baby blues? blues? I'm with you. I'm with you. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Anti-Gentile sentiment, pure and simple. Shabos Goys who lick the boots of racists like Tavaya Singer while demeaning so you for having the yeah. right political outlooks. So we get to be racists and boldly, but anybody else that we think might theoretically be a racist definitely is, and it's wrong to be a racist. It's so like, why is it not Whoa. wrong when you're a racist? Like, come on. <laughs> Whoa, this is crazy. All right, here's a bit. Here's a blast from the past. Someone sent me last night. I'm sure you will find it as edifying as I did. Robert Price is disgusting with Derek Lambert. I just want to say, like, yo, man, that was one of the craziest streams. Like, man, like, I've always respected Derek, but this whole Bob Price situation took it to a new level for me. Um, I, I really want people to understand something. A couple things, man. Like, so so my my dad's hosted a political talk shows my whole life, and um, at one point he used to own a cable company. But I grew up like hanging out in the TV studio, you know, and doing events there and stuff like that. And I've always, because of that, like kind of taking TV a bit more seriously, I think, than most people. Like, obviously, you could just put the TV on and just, you know, knock yourself out, right? But I've I've always liked to think I've tried to have a critical eye for, like, the value of somebody's program, right? And and an appreciation for what's going on from a human perspective, right? The people, there's people in front of that camera, right? My dad interviews a politician. That's somebody who's taking time out of their, their job to, you know, educate the public. And, you, you know, you kind of respect that and all the stuff going on behind the scenes. And where I'm going with this is I've learned that to a certain degree, no one on TV, especially not on YouTube, like, owes you their personal journey. But in a sense, the vulnerability involved makes for some of like the best programming possible, right? Like the best characters in movies that we, that we feel it's like, it's like we, we, we see that moment when they break, we see them at their lowest, we see them when they're hurt. Um, and there's a way in which 
we don't get that from most YouTubers. And I just don't think people appreciate what it means for somebody like Derek who has an audience that's like a packed stadium full of people, you know, 80,000 subs or whatever it is. And then, you know, the thousands of people that watch all of his actual content. It's a lot of people, you know, could you imagine getting on stage in front of 15,000 people who you don't owe your most vulnerable moments to and telling them about what's going on in your life. Like to me, like, man, that's, that's crazy, right? Like you gotta, you gotta show love for that. You gotta appreciate that. You gotta recognize that. Like if you're a supporter, that should make you a much bigger supporter. If you had doubts about Derek's authenticity, that should get rid of your doubts. If you, didn't know if he really cares. Now you should know he really cares. You know what I mean? And it's like people trivialize those moments. Like he started, he, we saw the whole journey. He started like, look, there's this problem with Bob Price. I don't really know how to handle it. You know, I'm just trying to figure this all out, but I don't want to betray Bob, you know, all the way to, you know, I'm reconsidering. Then it was like, wait, I can't have Bob on here anymore. But then he was a set. He's gonna, and, 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 and he let us in on that whole journey, right? That's like, like what I do. Like when I talked about like, you know, streaming all day or whatever. I I argue to my colleagues that it's like reality streaming. It's like taking this YouTube TV game and actually making it more like reality TV, where people are getting more of a feel of the life and times. Right. And that's what Derek did. Like that was reality TV. Like he, he really he became the star of the show himself. But yeah, I, I just, I don't want to keep going about the man. Like that shit matters to me, man. And it, it had a huge impact on me and I hate seeing people trivialize it or make fun of him for it or you know and, and i hope most most of us i hope most of us are clear on the fact that they only do that because they recognize how powerful these moments are and they want him to feel silly so that he doesn't do more of this but man i think for those of us that really understand the power of those moments man we're like nah bro you you took us from fans to super fans with shit like that absolutely the one good thing about this on um, the opposite side is that it's one thing for us to notice that Dr. Bob's a racist and here's how you can tell, blah, blah, blah. It's another thing for some of his most loyal fans to come out and call out to Dr. Bob and say, hey, us racists got to stick together. Like, so they're calling him out. His own fans are calling him out as a racist and saying, I don't see the problem. <laughs> it's worth noting. I don't know what the hell that crazy ass Facebook message was for. That was wild. All right, man. Let's go. Let's go ahead and keep going, James. Here is the entire narrative story of what happened with Robert and Price and me. Now, you might ask, before we even get started, why are you still talking about this? Why are you bringing this up? Mm. Two reasons. People need to know. But also, on Facebook, a recent video that was produced by some evangelical right-wing conservative Christian made a thing about me where I cried when I let Bob Price go back in the day. And Bob mocked and scoffed at it. By the way, another interesting thing and why I want to really do this is to have people learn to watch the people that are around us. You see, mm. the guy that made that video or the, the, the post on the video, my last video talking about wishing that I had overdosed when I was in active addiction, his name is Ed Koch or something. I'll sh sh here's the picture on the screen of what he said on Bob Price's posts about me. This guy's a racist, anti-Semite. 
literally hates Jews, um, is obviously talking about whites, ethnicity of my white race and all that kind of stuff. You can see it in the rhetoric, and this guy's a nutcase. This is a friend of Bob Price. This is someone commenting on his stuff. Bob's just you know, going along with what's being posted there. It also brought to my attention the recent debacle between another fellow student at the feet of the master, Jacob Berman, and what happened with him and Bob Price. There's so much I didn't know about Bob even before all of this fallout happened that I discovered online about him being removed from multiple, multiple stuff, from HP Lovecraft conventions to being removed as editors here and there, can't get a job in places, and it all makes sense now. So I think it's important that I really express to you the whole story because people today still don't see the whole package. Bob Ooh. Price does not even realize the whole package. And yes, I can't imagine. Yes. Now, look, I got to I got to ask some stuff, man. Well, I got to ask some stuff, man. I'm going to tell you something else, man. It's bigger than Derek. It's bigger than me. With this whole incident with Bob Price and Derek, and then Bob Price um, on Pine Creek about eight months ago, as I call it, was the catalyst for many of us um, who have only come into this community in the last couple of years to realize we have a right wing problem. Now, a lot of us, if you've been paying attention to the atheist community, you'll notice we have a white boy problem. And I call it a white boy problem because that's how I see it. I don't, I don't, I, I, I say white boy because there's not, there's, there's nothing to me inferred in that, right? Like white boys are great. Love them, love them. Wonderful. Most of my closest friends, most of my teachers, right? Like, like love them, love them. It's just a demographic thing. And I think, and I want to establish the demographic thing as neutral, Right, like a demographic is just demographics. If you go to the NAACP, you're gonna be like, everybody here is colored. So if there may be some issues here, they're colored people issues, right? You're not being racist. You're just saying that's the demographic that's here, right? Now, what happens is that dictates a lot. It dictates what are the interests of the community, who gets who gets put up in the algorithm, who's celebrated, who's not celebrated, what we talk about, what we don't talk about, what's our communication style, what's outside of our communication style. And so that's what I mean by that. It's just a plain, no judgment, just who's making content, who's watching this content, what do their demographics look like? Most people who are in touch with these things, if they use vidIQ or tools like that, YouTube will tell you. It'll be like straight up, you know, this community is like 90 plus percent male or some channels and, and it's freaking, you know, 85 plus percent, you know, European descent or whatever we're going to say. I mean, it's just the numbers, right? Um, but that is totally different. Like, like a lot of us were becoming aware of that, right? But to, to us, that just meant we need some new voices. We, we need some diversity, right? We, we, need, we need other people to be elevated in the space. That, that really wasn't, uh, like I said, it was just ambiguous. It, was just, it just seemed like a demographic thing, right? For whatever reason. Um, but when this Bob Price thing happened and followed up on Pine Creek, it was like, whoa, no, 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 no. We have a problem in this community because a lot of the people in this community might be atheist, but they are on that right wing propaganda tip. And the culture war that we see playing out in the wider society, on the news, um, on, on maybe in our, our state governments or in our, in our communities that way, is actually playing out within our community on YouTube. And I think I speak for myself and a lot of people when I say the, the, the tipping point for a lot of this was the Bob Price situation and the, the follow-up Doug situation. So what does, that, what does that mean to me? It means it's, it's actually really important that Derek addresses this because to me, this is, this is the rubber meeting the road. This is where a lot of us have, have in this community, you know, we, we deconvert from religion or whatever, 
and then we talk about um, oh, you know, we're here to oppose the destructive influence religion has in our world um, or, or in our communities. Um, and this actually is some of us realizing, holy shit, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You can leave behind the religious, you can leave behind the religion but not leave behind the problematic um, ideas that are there and you can feed right into it. And we've had the, we've literally been in this process since then of trying to identify where we stand on these issues and how to respond to it. And you know, it, it ties into the other s stuff we've had, particularly the, the situations with Doug and our issues with mutual friends and, and all of this stuff. So I, I for me, and, and I want to let James and Steph and whoever else on this too, but for me, it's important that Derek talks about this because this is an important issue in understanding what the fuck is happening in the YouTube atheism space right now. And it is really important to those of us that are affected um, and those of us that, you know, feel like we identify strongly with certain allies that we've identified to understand how they see it, where they're at, where they stand and 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 how they intend to move forward with all this. So, so we're really dealing with some shit in this community and this this thing between Bob and Derek is 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 pretty pivotal in in us all dealing with this shit so I I just want to say I think it's important for reasons that I don't think Derek wants to you know, take responsibility in putting himself as the protagonist and central casting of, <laughs> you know, the political issues that are playing out in the atheist community. But I, I think that's the situation we found ourselves in. Go ahead, Seth. It's important to remember that the, that, uh, the cultural residue of Christianity in, in Western tradition and really throughout the world is a heritage of, well, anti-Semitism. I mean, let's look at Martin Luther's views on Jews, uh, racism, look at the attitude towards uh, uh, picking up the white man's burden, as as was said by Rudyard Kipling, you know, the mission mission to the to the poor heathen and and that sort of thing. So there's we could do stream after stream after stream on uh on the residue of of Christian ideology and, and Christian tradition uh, left throughout uh, and woven throughout um, uh, Western civilization and right. its impact. Uh, yeah, how it poisons. But, but every these, but country. these, but, but but folks like Bob just seem to just want to drop the religious aspects of that but carry on the cultural residue yes which is extremely disturbing yes um and and i fear that um without a religious narrative and a celestial supervisor it really is on us to bring the type of social consequences necessary to um, protect and defend ourselves. And what concerns me is I, I think we have to, because I'm, I'm not calling for, you know, legally doing anything, right? I'm not calling for these people to be locked up or to have their political opinions taken from them or to have them banned from these platforms. I'm advocating for people to speak up and let people know it's not okay. And then if you can't get through to people when you speak up, well, then it's it's time to cut them off. And that is, to me, perfectly within our toolkit. And it's the type of thing we should be doing. Uh, and they are certainly trying to uh, poison the well so that we don't do those type of things. That's what all the narrative about cancel culture and woke mobs and all of this type of shit is about. But 
fuck it, let them let them cry. But it's what we got to do. Go ahead, Steph. You know, and and those of us on on who are at the uh, at the focal point of their attacks, their attacks are literally uh, about canceling not just culture but life. They're literally about that. I mean, the the dripping anti-Semitism in those earlier comments was just you know that sort of thing is dangerous to people. And I'm not advocating, and I want you know I right. want to be perfectly clear. I don't. The only ill will I bear folks like Bob Price are the fact that he can't see how dangerous this rhetoric rhetoric mm -hmm. is. People are going to get hurt. People are being hurt. Right. When he was on about when he was on about the whole Black Lives Matter, that was an issue over the death of an innocent man. Mm. You know, and and to get all up in arms of of somehow your privilege is being taken away when people's lives are being lost. And you're laughing about it, yeah. And 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 decrying a plea for a fair and impartial understanding of the systems that have led to the kind of oppression that leads to people being killed, little kids in Walmart being shot because they're playing with a toy gun. A, you know, yeah. a, a kid, a kid with a opening, a, opening a, 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 a package of, of jelly beans and being killed because he happened to be walking in the wrong place at night. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, children, children being denied proper medical care because you can't understand one aspect of who they are as people. I mean, these people are doing the eliminating. These people right. are doing they're 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 doing that stuff, and they don't even have God to blame for it. All right, that's yeah, I, that's that's we're both on the same page about that. One, the misunder the not understanding why, right? Because you you should no longer be hanging on to the religious narrative that explains it. Um, in the cases in the case of so many of the believers, but then also sort of uh well then what what do we do about it because we we don't have that supernatural authority to appeal to james i, I love this picture uh you know a, a bunch of atheists out side of me down in somebody else's chat because i was talking about uh christianity as a form of racism um but yeah you got to sh share this picture with me and and i think we'll, we'll we might we might have to do a stream on that um but uh <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's keep rolling this tape here. It would change anything in his mind either way. So let's go back. I'm a hardworking man. I've always worked with my oh. hands. I did outside. Obama for your mama. I appreciate it. Stupid energy. Thank you so much for the the tip. Um, in addition to joining the the VIP club again recently, uh, always just been one of the biggest supporters of the channel and we really really appreciate you and uh yeah yeah that it, it it really does mean a lot to me um i i don't know i gotta be honest with you gang like i don't know if i don't know like if we'll make it to monetization anytime soon, right? I, I love the idea of pushing to a thousand and ten thousand and a hundred thousand subscribers, but it's mostly because I just want to take over the internet. Um it's not really about the money. <laughs> it's about the global domination. <laughs> um uh but recently there's been a lot of channels like Uncle Bobby and the Afro atheists that have lost monetization, right? Um, and so I really think even if I do get monetized, we'll probably lose it. Right. If we, if we stay on what we're about. Mm -hmm. And so it, I, um, you know, I've always been about sort of these other ways of supporting channels, but it takes people to kind of give it a shot, like give gather a shot, give Ko-Fi a shot, try Streamlabs, you know? Um, 
so yeah, I, I, I just really appreciate it because uh, it, I just want to see people to see like that's the difference, right? Is people can actually send us some love, and I don't have to be at a thousand subs, and I don't have to worry about YouTube demonetizing my channel, and and I just feel like if if this becomes a thing, and and more people start doing it, and it becomes a meaningful way to support smaller content creators, it'll be because uh, uh, people like you guys and Stupid Energy who like who who bought into it, right? And who were like, yeah, I, I will try to support smaller content creators this way. So yeah, thanks. Really, really appreciate it. Side construction worth work. When I got my wife pregnant at a young age, um, she got pregnant. We were just barely legal adults. I mean, I was an adult. Her mom had to sign her over to be part, like to where I was the one as her parent in a way, legally speaking. We got married. I was turning 18. She was 16 turning 17. I can't remember exactly the dates, but she's a year and a half, two years younger than me. Now, here is the thing. I've worked my whole life with my hands and I was working at this construction company after I'd finally got clean off drugs seven, seven and a half years ago called HBC Construction. It's a renewable solar panel company at the time. They sold it out to another company at this point, but I went from the ground up from a grunt to a supervisor and my work ethic is militant. I mean, I competed with all of my colleagues and I know for a fact work ethic wise, I had the most vicious work Inter ethic when mm -hmm. it came to getting stuff done efficiently. And uh, yeah. You can keep playing. I just want to make sure we're all good. Oh yeah. Yeah. Welcome Lena. Good to have you here. And done right. Well, in this company, I had to travel. I traveled for three and a half years working for this company. And I would stay in hotels every week. I'd be gone sometimes two weeks at a time. If I was lucky, I would be able to be at home in the warm bed with my wife, comforting her for a day or two. And then I'd be back off a Saturday and Sunday, Monday morning, 5 a.m. I'm at the shop picking the guys up. Boom, we're in the field. We're working and I'm running sites. I'm actually managing all this stuff. I did this for three and a half years. Our marriage started going to crap because I was always at a distance. We argued, we fought, I had to go speak to a counselor, all of this, lots of stuff in life happened. And to save my relationship, my marriage and my family, I said, I'm going to relocate my family. And I was doing myth fishing while working at this construction company at some point during this work as a hobby. Myth fishing was just a dream, just a hobby. Never even thought it was going to be what it is. I just did this because I love learning about this stuff. And it helped distract me when I was away from my family. Very I'd watch bad. endless YouTube videos with Robert Price and you name it, AM Byte Gnostic Radio with Miguel. I'd watch his stuff endlessly. I'd come across debates all the time. I'd watch this weird teachings and things that you don't find, like Manly P. Hall and other stuff that's out there. You don't get this from church. So I started to study and learn and find out more while I was gone at HBC. As time continued, I ended up going um, from North Carolina, relocating my family because I want things to be right with us to Washington State. And when I relocated, I took my 401k, everything I earned to try and go and start over. And when I got there, I did. I finally did start over. I was working at a construction company that was on the road just a little bit, but I told myself, I never want to do this again and be away from you guys again. I want to be at home with you. So what I did is, I found a way with my other channel that I had on YouTube, which is just a recovery channel where I document my journey as a human being who suffered with heroin addiction and other addictions, that I was going to actually work for a rehab that would pay me a check to work from home and simply help drug addicts who are strugg struggling with the disease of addiction save their lives and get some of them to go to the treatment center that I worked for and others who could not afford or did not have the insurance, we're in a bad situation in America with this, to go to treatment centers that could take them, whether they had insurance or if they were just state funded, whatever, anything. And I would spend a lot of time. My wife would help me. In fact, she was so good at doing it, we got her hired on. So now me and my wife are working from home, never having to be on the road, making an income, helping drug addicts from dying from addiction. To the Ed Coward guy, you have no clue what you're talking about. And I hope you're speaking from ignorance and one day will learn and grow up. The guy who wished I had overdosed to my active addiction, you have no clue what you're talking about again. Well, 
we're working. And that hobby of mine, myth vision, I was able to put more eggs in that basket. I loved learning about the Bible stuff. I'd come across the Ralph Ellis, Robert Price. I'm interviewing these people. And I'm closely connected to Robert, paying him for every visit he made to do a live stream with me. I'd pay him something that I could afford and he would be willing to do it. It's not like he charged an arm and a leg, but it's not like I had an arm and a leg to give. So I'm growing myth vision, learning from these people, sitting at the feet of whom I thought was the master, like a father figure to me that I'm learning from. And usually the learning came from him to me. The relationship was not he was learning from me mostly, but I was supposed to learn from him. Not saying there weren't things that Bob didn't learn along the way from me, but as far as it came to politics, he is immovable. You cannot get him to see outside of his Fox News paradigm. That's just a fact. And I never went there because I saw the same pattern with my own parents. My mom and dad were diehard Trump supporters, hardcore conservatives. I love them to death and I always will. But the fact remains, I'd never have them teach uh, on myth vision. They'd never come on here to educate the world or whatever. Um, it's just not something that I could see. And I saw that. So I would car compartmentalize this thing and I would focus on myth vision, but the politics rarely got up. And I'd have to tell Bob periodically, Bob, don't bring up politics on myth vision. I don't want them brought up. I want to focus on Bible, mythology, atheist, all that stuff. I don't want to deal with any of the nonsense politically. That was my whole point. And I still, to this day, don't want to make Myth Vision a political channel at all. That is still clearly not my goal. However, there are some things you learn along the way, and I'm learning every day, that go beyond just politics. You see, at one point, I guarantee you, in the rhetorical back and forth in the politics, I can guarantee you there were people who thought segregation is a political issue. And yes, it was, but it was much more than that. Women voting was just a political issue. And notice women now can vote, right? So changing things that are human right issues, even on the issues of abortion and such, there's so many of these issues that come up. And I'm sitting here learning from Bob Bible stuff. And our relationship grows. Well, there's this funny thing that came up out of nowhere called COVID-19. When COVID-19 hit, I did not realize what this meant for the world. I thought this is going to go away after a couple of months and it's stuck with us. It was so bad that the rehab that was paying me to work from home, they would fly people in from state and all over the United States to come to the rehab and get clean and to get treatment. They didn't have any flights. People were closing down the flights for a while. There was people not being able to get on the airplanes. And so they laid off everybody. This was the first time I'd ever been laid off in my life from any employer that I worked for. So now I have a little bit of money I've saved up. And there's a rehab that's local in Florida that I was going to try and go work for. And I just uplift my family in the midst of the chaos of COVID-19, and we start traveling. We passed through North Carolina and picked up my wife's brother, who almost died by being strangled by an electrical cord from guys that were in the hood. So to the Ed guy who thinks in this uh, little picture of his that he has on Facebook remarking about me on Bob Pr P Price's post, uh, as if I don't know what it's like to be in uh, low poverty areas where more crime rates are and such. I lived in Fayetteville, North Carolina for most of my life. And trust me, there's plenty of crime there and plenty of struggle. I know all about it, which is why I know something. And I'm speaking from a position of knowing what it's like to be in that struggle. So maybe you can listen and learn. Long story short, I relocate and I go through, we save my wife's brother who's dying of fentanyl addiction. He's hooked on fentanyl. We go down to Florida in a hotel room looking to rent a place. My credit isn't the best from all the years that I ran the streets in my active addiction. I really ruined our credit for, for you know, a long, long time. I'm uh, withdrawing my brother-in-law off fentanyl, trying to get hired at this rehab and finding a house to rent. I can't find anywhere to rent. My dad has also fell off the wagon at the time from his alcoholism. He suffers with the disease of addiction, just like I have. And my dad ends up having to make a strong decision, but he did. And I'm proud of him for that. 
he ended up relocating himself and let us take over the house. We couldn't live with him while he was in active addiction, but he went up to New York and dried out off alcohol with my grandmother, his mom. And then he went out West to where we are now, but back to North Carolina, I relocate my family here. The rent is not too expensive. And in fact, what I was making at the time from, from YouTube was just enough to cover my rent in North Carolina. It's much more affordable in North Carolina than where it is here in Washington state for rent. I'm making just enough, but I know if I put all my work ethics, I believe in myself today. If I put everything that I have into this basket, I could probably do myth vision full time. And my wife was working, helping at the dental office as well. I had my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my wife's family and her kids and his kid in our house. We had 11 people in this teeny weeny little three bedroom house. And I'm trying my best to step up to the plate and take care of everybody during COVID because everyone had to pull together. I was traveling. It's only one hour from where I lived in North Carolina to Bob Price's house. And I would go over there and I would record endless, endless hours of content. And I started a Patreon that helped me also to provide income for my family. And how I did that was if you joined the Patreon, you could ask a question of the academics and I would record that co that recording in 1080p high definition with Robert and Price at the feet of the master, you would get your question asked. And it really did help me get off the feet, off, off of my, on my feet to be able to do this full time. Bob Price played a role in that process. My work ethic played a significant role. My willingness to drive and edit endless hours staying up in that garage where my office was it was not temperature controlled. I was out there in hot days and then cold in the winter, editing, 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 producing the content we see here on Myth Vision. So I'm at the feet of the master. I'm recording content and I had to make GoFundMes along the way because Bob Price's time meant money. And so the GoFundMes would help like his recent one with Jacob Berman right before the split. Jacob went to bat for him just like I did. Isn't it weird that Jacob broke away and now he's no longer working with Bob? Everyone's the problem, but Bob. Everyone is the problem, but Bob. Keep that in mind. So I'm making GoFundMes. I'm sending him income to make sure that I can come and travel and record with him. We had like 10 visits that I had already paid in advance. I am a workhorse. And along the way, I noticed stuff creeping up through social media. I noticed Chrissy Hansen whom I thought at the time was just bitching and, and didn't like the things that Bob was saying. And, and I didn't like it because I was like, just compartmentalize these things. Bob, Bob's not a bad guy. He wouldn't hurt anyone. I know I'm friends with him. And at the end of the day, that was my thinking at the time. I even went over one time, set up my tripod camera, recording Bob and his best friend, evangelical Christian fundamentalist, hardcore right-wing Trump supporting friend to do some little recording responding to the woke cancel culture of his flashing sword series. I told him I wanted no part in the videos. I wanted nothing to do with that. I listened and I watched and I listened to both sides talk. And this was a stepping stone along the way of me realizing who I am and what I'm doing. I'm deconverting from my views politically, socially, uh, within my belief system of God all along the process Chris, because I'm listening to more than just whoops, Bob Price. Sorry, Chrissy, I'm interviewing Elaine Pig. Sorry, sorry about that, gang. Chrissy was the person who um, was on Neil's discussion with me uh, when we sat down with Dr. Bob Price. So Chrissy plays a role in all of this because... Um, Chrissy was one of the authors who removed um, her work from the book that Dr. Price was, I believe, an editor of or something, where, where he wrote an introductory piece and, 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 and people had problems with his introduction. So people pulled their work out of that. She was one of those scholars. So... Um, she, and then I, th I think also, um, Heathen Queen, um, also was one of the people that brought out some of the problems with Dr. Price's stuff on social media. So, uh, that, that's, that's kind of what I know about, um, how, how some of these people fit into this. Eagles and Bart Ehrman and all the top scholars in the world on these subjects. I'm interviewing various voices and not just Bob and Ralph Ellis and this little kind of 
very small fringe Avery. corner of thinking. My my oh, my views nice. have expanded, and my guests have expanded. In fact, I had created a PhD list, very long one. I was proud of, and I'd flex hard on academics that I would come across when I would email them to have them come on, inquire about doing an interview with them. Some of them, about half a dozen over the years, literally wrote me back, naming. Bob Price saying, I'm not interested in coming on the platform if you have this gentleman on there. And they had no interest in coming on. And some of these academics who refused to join me then actually joined Myth Vision now. And I'm thinking, wow, why would they be so reluctant? Fuck them. That's what I was thinking. Fuck them. I don't care. That was my thinking process. This, whatever. Everyone's so sensitive. Being so sensitive. Why are they so sensitive? You just need a man up. You need to grab your cojones and man up. This was my mindset. I was raised with a militant, very hardcore special forces father. Come on, be a man. This was my kind of mindset. And I still have that inherited in me. I mean, if I got a man up and fit. And I remember like, it's crazy because this is by this point what he does. And y'all got to remember Derek is, has an academic channel and, you know, bringing people the work of these academics is what he does for a living. And, it's, it's, it's important to think about this. And I have a lot of sympathy for this now because the thing I like about, one of the things I love about Derek is I relate to him in the sense that I feel a sense of responsibility for the community that built up, that's built up around my channel. Um, I don't think anybody out here in the atheist community would claim credit for the atheist community because it's such a it's such a you know big and dynamic space on YouTube, but I do think you know there there are tight there are tight knit communities that build up around certain channels, and um you, you know the the tighter knits between channels that are more closely related. And therefore, they have more overlap in the people they collaborate with and and who watches them. And part of, you know, taking ownership of your own influence in that way is becoming aware of you know, the consequences of your platform and, and how people are watching you. And so w what I'm what I'm really hearing from Derek is his own growth in that way. And uh you know it's it's um I was with him when when he first when all of this first happened and and he was like oh I'm I'm hearing this but I'm not going to deplatform Dr. Price I'm you know stick with Dr. Price. I, to be honest I was I was like fine with that yeah you know, I was like I was like okay like I I know where you're at I, I hey Derek that's your guy like I'm you know we don't have a problem with you know like you continue to have him because I just I just wanted to be there to support Derek with like what I felt bad for him and I just want him to know like yo like we got your back man like it's, it's all good right but then like he changed his mind like he said like he took in new information as Uncle Bobby's always highlighting right and he was like nah I can't do this anymore and I don't want to do this anymore and I was like yeah now I'm with that like I get it um, and like I said that that led to be the catalyst of a the realization that this was going on in our community. Now there's a whole bunch of channels I don't support and people that I don't want to deal with because they're on that tip. <laughs> Truth. Truth. A, a, a critical piece. When I first, when I, when I listened to Derek's stream this morning, uh, this leapt out at me because it reminded me of my encounter with Pine Creek. Well, you've got a tough skin. You could take it, right? So what difference does it make? You're strong enough. You should be able to take it. And, you know, and Doug and and uh, Bob seem to have that attitude. Have a, have a thick skin, sticks and stones may break your bones, names will never hurt you. 
Uh, why are you upset that I call you ugly? You should be able to smile and take that. Hmm. You ought to you ought to have the charity and generosity to let me to be a dick to you and not complain. Be a good little girl. Yeah. Fuck y'all. Fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck y'all. And this is this is what Derek's saying. Oh, so well, compartmentalize, compartmentalize, blah blah right. blah blah. Right. Well, right. you know, Chrissy's not going to be able to compartmentalize Absolutely. when it's clear that her strong academic work is being is is being associated with garbage. Right. Yeah, and what I was, what I was, um, yeah, I, 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 I agree with all that, and it's kind of where I was going with this is like, I, what, what I admire Derek for is listening, right? Is taking it in, and and it doesn't have to be, it's not, it's not always going to be easy on the way down, right? Um, you know, taking your medicine is not always a pleasant experience, as we all know, um, and. But he, but he took in the new information. He's like, wait, I have a responsibility. These people are telling me this is not okay. I've got to kind of take that into consideration. All right, I'm taking in the new information. You know what? I'm with them. It's not okay. And what I see happening to him is the thing I've seen happening to me that it's unfair, but I guess it just comes with the territory, is people then take it like, you're speaking from only your perspective. It's not the case. If if only if if this situation was about Derek waking up one morning, realizing Bob Price had said some problematic shit on social media, and then deciding he didn't want Bob Price on his channel anymore, we literally wouldn't be here. We literally wouldn't be here. One, that's not the story that happened. And two, if that was a story that happened, we literally wouldn't be here because Derek would have just done what he said. He would have been like, oh, yeah, all right, well, we're going to compartmentalize that. Me and Bob aren't going to talk about it. And life would have just marched on. Instead, what happened was he was like, yo, these other scholars are telling me there's a line that's been crossed and they can't be associated with that line. All right, so at first he, 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 he was loyal to his mans and then he thought about it. And he was like, wait, yeah, I actually value keeping myth vision on the right side of history, right? I actually value, you know, do, doing what's right and I'm not going to look the other way because now he has a responsibility. Once, once it's been brought to you, the ball is in your court. And this, this is something, man, I, I wish that those of you that don't have channels or even those of you who do, like, really think about this sincerely. I do the same thing when I talk to people about certain things. I don't bring up certain things for certain because once certain conversations are had, there's no going back. Because once these scholars bring this to Derek's attention, he's now responsible for how he responds. If he if he if he if he if he decides to not have Bob Price on anymore, he's gonna have to deal with the consequences of that. And that is gonna be what it takes to to, you know keep the doors open with certain scholars and certain parts of the community, et cetera. Right. And mm -hmm. if he doesn't, if he, if he just ignores it or he just keeps Bob price on and whatever, then he's going to pay the price in terms of these collaborators, not being, a, you know, wanting to work with them and people in the community become aware of the situation and be like, Oh, so Derek's one of those ignore it enablers. Right. There is there there's there's even even doing do even doing nothing is unacceptable. Right. People people think this. They think, oh, if I just if I just don't do anything, if I just don't say anything, if I just let the situation go and just keep it going, then I can't be held accountable or responsible. And that's not how this works. This works like once we sit you down at the big kids table and let you know what's going on. You are responsible because you have been given a seat at the big kids table and let know what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And. And and so he really would have been, in a sense, 
doing a disservice to those scholars that he would have needed to justify for just ignoring it. Like, bro, Derek, we pulled you aside. We bent your ear, bro. We told you what the situation about price. We told you. We showed you. Like, come on, man. Like, what? What are you doing, right? Um, and so I think he did the right thing there. But, but, but look at how it plays out, right? That part of the story gets fucking buried way below the headline. Headline is, Derek cancels mentor Bob Price. Right? It's not mm -hmm. Derek acts responsibly to feedback from a community of scholars. Oh, that's, that's a far less sensational headline. Right? Mm -hmm. um, even in the shit that I've been through recently with Doug and all of that shit, right? The headlines were Bundy bullies so-and-so determines who you can be friends with. Not Community of color in atheist YouTube is hurt by, you know, racism being ignored in our community. Oh, that's a far less sensational headline, right? In other words, the people who take their role in this community seriously often have to bear the price, no pun intended, um of that position, right, even when really they're actually representing the community perspective, right? It's a whole community that is essentially taking the stand against Bob Price, right? Mm -hmm. Derek just happens to be the content creator with the, the, the platform where this plays out, right? Just like for me, I'm like the whole, com or, or, you know, a significant population in our community had issues with, us having the whole duck situation and mutual friends or whatever, right? But since I was the person who was like, yeah, I can't ignore this. I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to deal with this, right? It's, it's, then the pushback is, oh, this one person is, is trying to rule over the fucking interwebs. And it's like, that, I, it just irritates me that people don't see that. But I, I say all that to just say, uh, I give Derek a lot of props for, being responsible, right, for taking his role seriously, and 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 he didn't know what this was, what the consequences were going to be. This could have been very costly to him. Could have turned out more of his audience than he's comfortable with are on that Bob Price tip. Um, yeah, right. Uh, doesn't doesn't affect my paycheck. It could have very significantly affected his. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, James, did you want to say something else? So, yeah, there's a lot happening here. It, it, Derek's running down the list of things that conservatives or far-right people say they respect, right? So uh, some of it's obvious. He's a white American man, right? So, But right. The, he, didn't choose to, he didn't choose to be white. He didn't choose to be a man. And honestly, he didn't even choose to be an American. So he's not even listing that shit because that stuff doesn't matter anyways, right? But th this, this ad guy, th this hater, is treating Derek like a worthless person who doesn't have basic human values. But the ad guy is the guy that ultimately doesn't have the values. And Derek does. So Derek is a family man. He's got a impeccable work ethic. His life is about struggle and triumph, right? So he's just checking the box after box after box. Of, right. Look what I've accomplished. Look at my character. Look at, look at what I've struggled through. Look, I'm raising yeah. kids and I, and I and I'm a, and I'm a devoted husband and I'm and I'm and I'm, I'm a business owner and I'm, I'm building this business from the ground up and he right. didn't just he, point, he points out I didn't just sit there and let somebody else build my channel for me and this is what the ad guy had in his head that, right that, doc, that Dr. Right. Price did all the work and Derek just like recorded it and then posted it like like somebody sharing something to their Facebook right. and Derek's like no 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 think about how many hours go in behind the scenes and you know of of editing and 100 you know, everything and, and researching and everything else that goes into this and plus bob price wasn't the only person he had he couldn't have built the channel on just bob price he he interviewed an awful lot of people and, and often he's tried to travel the world to do it now at first he couldn't afford to travel that far but eventually he was able to he built this from the ground up right. and that's what he did and so you know it, it wasn't just dr price's efforts his labors that were going into the production of those episodes 100 Derek, Derek put even more work into them than price did and price ended up telling him he didn't care what if Derek kept him up he's like you can keep it up if you want to i don't care 
right? So he signed off on it, and already it was technically already signed off on, right. and he was paid. But Dr. Price was paid to be on there besides. So he technically he was the employee. Right. And Derek never said, you know, everybody in the community stop being Dr. Price's friend or stop going to his channel or, you know, go out and spread the news that he's evil or any crap like that. Nothing. Right. He never tried to get Dr. Price canceled ever. All he said was, you know, I just can't continue to to platform him here because the consequences are too significant to my family. And that's where his loyalties are, to his family, first and foremost. Right. And that's exactly where his loyalty should be. Yep. Yep. 100%, James. Couldn't say anything better. Face something. I can, I promise. But I've learned to listen. Something I had never learned in my life before. To stop acting like I knew everything. Maybe I'm wrong. My friend list expanded with people who did not identify like me, with people who weren't the same way as I was in terms of my sex or my gender orientation or my politics or my religion. I started realizing there's a huge world of people and not all of them fit this right wing, white man, conservative, uh, you know, this particular kind of household where the mother and the father, and you got to have this particular type of raising of your children, the whole nine. There's so much more to the world that I didn't know. And I'm still baffled and learning because I'm now listening, not being, oh, it needs to be this way. So all of these views that Bob has start creeping up over time. And I've always said, like, just suppress it. Let's move on with the business. Let's compartmentalize. And there was a time when it really caught on before the whole Pine Creek thing happened. Bob Price had made a remark with a black kid, his mom, who's crying about his death. Yes. So a black yes. kid or a young man gets killed by the police. The mother's crying and he, he wrote this comment that was so insensitive that I said at the time, this, this is some racist shit. I mean, he's, I've never seen him make these comments about white people. Um, and here he is making these remarks about this black kid being this thug. And he literally is talking to the Guys, mother in the comment, like, in the chat. you shouldn't be crying. You should be crying about your thugs, your worthless thug machine. son type thing. And I empathize. I've been growing empathy. I've always been an empathizing person. But like when you start to deconvert and you hear other people's voices and you're sensitive to their stories – when you're like me and you've been to the 12 step groups and you hear people talk about their, their truth Thanks of how they LinkedIn. ended up getting clean from drugs or alcohol. And you want to understand, you really start relating with people and you want to understand them. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, this is some insensitive bullshit. And this mm. is ugly. There's no other way to paint this, but ugly, no matter what your intentions were, no matter if he didn't mean it as a racist thing, you should apologize for being so insensitive. And yeah, and this is this is the thing that is pissing me off about the Anna Kasparian situation on the Young Turks, where, you know, she made an intensive comment about she's a woman and she doesn't want to be referred to as a, a person with a uterus or a birthing person. Um, she's received a lot of pushback that that comment was hurtful and exclusionary of... Um, trans men in particular, which is the only context in which that type of language is used, and she should have known better. And um, the fact that somebody who's supposed to be an ally and progressive can't just say, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I hurt people in this community, and, 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 and I, I didn't mean to do that. And I'm going to try not to do that again. I mean, it's just, I mean, what, what, what are we talking about? Like, have we, have we really reached the place where I'm sorry is too much to ask? Where it, it, we've really bought into the narrative that you're somehow weak if you admit that you made a mistake. I, I don't, I don't understand this, but I, I do, I, I felt the same way about the comment that, that Bob made, um, you know, uh, kind of the way the conversation played out the night we sat down with Chrissy, we didn't have 
as much time as I would have liked to really get into that comment. Um, I also thought once once the conversation went down that Tucker Carlson route, um, you know, there's no point once you realize somebody's going to, they're, they're that bought into the right wing propaganda narratives. But yeah, I certainly, I certainly relate to Derek here. Uh, James, where are you at with this? So yeah, everything you're saying makes sense to me. I didn't know about the Anna Kasparian thing. I hadn't heard about that yet. So I'll be looking forward to seeing how the dust settles on that one. Uh, it's, unf- it's really unfortunate, really unfortunate. And yeah, um, man, um, it, it's looking to me like I'm almost thinking they're not going to address it. And and then, uh, like you said, I don't know where the dust settles on on something like that. Uh, really sad. You know, she's still pretty young. She's still learning. She's still growing. And not even a year ago, I I couldn't make any sense out of the language that was that was um, intrinsic and necessary to discussing gender and sex issues. Like I I just I needed Kata's help, and I needed Stephanie's help, and I needed other people in the community's help to figure it out because sure. I grew up I grew up in a different place and time. I'm not a boomer, but like Titan Uranus says, I may as well be because I grew up in that generation. And like, I'm co- so I'm trying to acclimate to this new paradigm that, right. that is, that is progressive, that is progressing. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know, maybe that's, maybe those kinds of people, maybe somebody, a, a boomer raised Anna and that's just a leftover remnant of that, where she just needs to kind of get caught up. Nobody's perfect, right? I, don't, I certainly don't sure. want to see Anna canceled over this. I, if we could all read each other's minds, like really, really, re- we'd all be out here canceling each other. This is why I say never meet your heroes, because everybody holds something problematic in their head somewhere, and you're lucky and they're lucky if it just never comes close to the surface, right? We all got yeah. some of these yeah. bits and pieces. So yeah. I, I try to be graceful about it, just yeah. say, you know, she's young, she'll work through it. This is going to be a growing pain issue for her, and she's earned a certain amount of leeway from us, a certain amount of grace to say, okay, let's see where she goes with this. Let's see what yeah. she does with it. The problem, so we'll the problem I have, and I think others just have, is is that there's this narrative, and I hear it in the Bob Price situation, and in the things we deal with in our community, and in this, in the response, even to 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 the to by the Young Turks, where There's this, don't tell me what to do. I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not going to be told what to say or how to act. And it's like, you are making the wrong anti-bullying campaign, right? It's like, you've said or done something insensitive in the context of a marginalized population who is being bullied. You getting the pushback and the feedback is not you being bullied. And the problem is that's what's you. So it's like you're, it's like you're pounding your chest against the people that you hurt, not the people who are hurting them. All right. Right. Like that. So it's like you. Oh, you said this thing that is insensitive, and instead of saying, "Hey, I'm sorry, I said this insensitive thing," you're like, "Well, no, I'm not going to let the." the trans people and the other people on the left who I just upset with my insensitive comment, tell me how to talk. And it's like, oh. all right, you're just making the problem worse. Yeah. Uh, right. Just say you're we'll sorry so happens. we can get on with the rest of our lives, please. Right. Um, but yeah, I, so, I agree with you, Jim. So in the meantime, and I, don't, I want to make sure we make some time to talk about this just briefly, that Dr. Price isn't simply um, a racist in terms of, not having the kind of respect that he has for non-white persons that he has for white persons, right? And and not being compassionate or empathetic or anything else. He's violently a racist because I don't remember everything that he said in the Price interview, but I do remember this moment where he was talking about the Black Lives Matter protesters and about looting and rioting and things like that. And he advocated, he, he appealed to the general public that... We need more vigilantes. We need people out there who, if they see something, they see a scene where it looks like somebody has set a fire. It looks like somebody has looted a building. It looks like somebody has done something wrong. If you see somebody that looks like they're part of the Black Lives Matter movement, assume, basically assume they're guilty and shoot to kill. 
assumed they're guilty. He shoot did. The kill. Yeah, yeah. It was really rough. You know, they by that point, you know, they've already declared themselves the enemy of the state or whatever, right? And then, right. and then with the January sixth thing, he just couldn't. He couldn't apply the same logic. It was. It was rough. Um, right. Yeah. Oh, did you see? Trump named his band the J6 band for January 6th. Uh-huh. Yeah, Isn't he, that just, crazy? he just did his rally. So I remember there was a story when the January 6th choir first released that song. And then uh, when we were watching the rally and he kind of came out to it or whatever before his speech, I told people in the chat what it was because I remember. But yeah, I, I'm glad like the news has kind of picked it up and 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 put that but yeah it's it's scary because it, it, he's celebrating the insurrection it, it's like his insurrection mm. choir more or less and right. you know which he nope. they sings over montages of the insurrection it's unbelievable right so for anybody that wants to know maybe because in case you don't the connection between dr price and trump dr price in that interview with pine creek also said that he can find no fault at all with anything that Trump ever said and did as president. Now, yeah, all, of his, yeah. all of his positive po- policies were 100% positive for America. Every The way he led was 100% yeah. positive for the world. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, in what alternate reality could that even be close and to And it true? was just the whole, well, we're not electing a Sunday school teacher, so. Yeah. Yeah, we're electing a bad boy leader. Some <laughs> crap. And I'm like, no, no, no. You're, we're electing a cult personality which is what's, you know, firing fascism in America. And I can understand that because Dr. Price was plugged into the Fox, not really, not actually news network, that he might not hear about all the things we heard about, which is also a problem. But there's no way that he didn't hear about at least some of it. Like he knew about the kids in cages for prolonged periods of time and intentionally being denied access to their family and access to their basic human rights under the uh, under the uh, international treaty for human rights um being denied access to medical care and hygienic supplies and even the young girls were denied uh, feminine products and when yeah. doctors showed up to give immunizations and do checkups they were turned away and told them they told they couldn't and we had all these kids sleeping on the cement with aluminum foil blankets it was crazy and it's like and not just for weeks and not just for months for a very very long time and the only justification was well obama originally set up this something like this that was you know that, that was no nothing like that and it only lasted for days, right? Not many months, you know, not like a year or two years. And then a lot of those kids that were in those camps, they got, which were concentration camps, by definition, they were political prisoners. Uh, and a lot of them disappeared. All the all the really cutest looking kids, especially the girls, they disappeared. They were mm. sold into sex, sex trafficking and have not yet been recovered. And so, you know, it, what Trump did to the environment, he, cl- he gutted the clean... Uh, he got, got at the EPA and, uh, and uh, appointed an oil exec to run it, got rid of the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, mm-hmm. like refused to participate in international um, efforts to contractually obligate each other to, to uh, pollution reform and it, it lied constantly. You cannot have a democracy that even sort of works if everything your leader says is a lie, because if people don't if people have been misinformed about what they're voting on then the vote doesn't mean shit. Right. They've been misinformed. And so honesty from our leader is absolutely fundamental to democracy if you have even a chance of making it work. And there's no way Dr. Price didn't know that every damn word out of that asshole's mouth was a lie. Every word out of it was a lie. And it's just like, he didn't care. Yeah, there's something deeply going, something deep going on there. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Go ahead, Steph. I, I just want to jump in on the age thing, because I hear this a lot. It's like, well, you know, once the oldsters die, everything will be good. Well, you know, maybe when I die, people won't be able to learn what it's like to live the, uh, the life of a trans woman for 69 years. But, you know, so be it for yeah, your, your loss, I guess. Mine too, but, you know, I won't, I won't give a fuck because I'll be dead. Mm. I just want to point out, Candace Owen is 33. Michael Knowles is 33. Ben Shapiro is 39. 
Matt Walsh is 36. Mm. Right. I just want yeah, you yeah. guys to yeah. remember yeah. where the information, where the poison is coming from. Sure, Bob Price has troglodyte views, but right. so does Walsh. Right. So does Shapiro. Right. So yeah. does Nolf. So does Candace Owens. Right. And all four the of those people, yeah. all four of those people have 50 times, 100 times, 1,000 times more influence than one washed up academic atheist. Sure. And they're all in their fucking 30s. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I've got to tell you, I, I will say this again. We thought we'd won. We thought we had the bastards down when we, when we, uh, when we protested in the streets to end the war in Vietnam, when we, when we were at Stonewall, when we were fighting for gay rights, when we lived through the gay flag, when we lived through all this shit, when we finally achieved all of a, a million different victories for, over the course of 60 plus years, we thought we'd won, but mm. we hadn't. We did not win. The people in our generation betrayed those victories for us. They're betraying mm. them today. Donald Trump is betraying them today. Others my, in my cohort are betraying it today. And who's leading the charge to overturn all those victories? Candace Owens, Michael Knowles, Ben Shapiro, mm. Matt Walsh. These are the people that are in for influencing your generation. So you right. watch out. Right. You right. fucking well watch out for, for, uh, for the people around you. This is why this conversation is important. This is why, this is why it's really necessary for people to concentrate on where the poison is lurking, it's leaching out because it's not generational. Yeah, it's eternal. Yeah, and it's uh, you know it's scary, and I don't you know a, a couple things I don't that 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 just uh, that are, I I find alarming is 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 one just the thought that. We're not taking it seriously enough, and 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 I and I hate that narrative, because I hate that I don't want that narrative applied to me. I don't I don't want somebody to tell me the world's going to be a better place. Uh, you just might not live to see it. Well, yeah, that, that's not very encouraging. Um, and I also wonder what it's going to take for people to to generally put atheists atheism in their same stream of consciousness because otherwise I think we're looking at the same thing to where there there's going to be more generations that pass before uh atheism becomes normalized um and it it, it definitely doesn't help to have um the internal struggle going on because we're literally sitting here talking about how Dr. Price, a well-known secular scholar, sounds just like Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens and, you know, all of, the, all of those folks. So, mm -hmm. it, 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 situ I, re go, go I ahead, regret sir. that I wasn't on camera for that one because I was really... You were. You, I was like, you were, but the, it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad you're here, Steph. We appreciate you. We do. And so also, people, and, and it's important too because uh, you're, you know, like Chrissy, you're at the tip of the spear with these issues. And um, um, yeah, yeah, a absolutely. And, and it's the type of thing that that Dr. Price is overlooking. Go ahead, James. Yeah, we all are. We're all we're all in this together, right? We are all invested in this. You know, one of the things, and people pointed out that, that DeVos, DeVos um, had um, adopted out a lot of those kids. So she stole those children and, and basically gifted them to uh, middle and upper class Christians so they could be indoctrinated. And this is part of the thing, like the whole point of assigning um, Betsy DeVos to that, to the role of leading her educational system is because her job was to dismantle it, to sabotage it, to do, redirect as much funding away from it as possible, to sow chaos as much as possible, because they wanted the educational system to collapse. Like you know, the postal system, to, but even yes. worse, yeah. You, you, right. know, you, you, know where, you know where the devotees get their money from, right? Yeah, that they run these, these big private... Um, Amway. Religious... Amway. 
They got that their, who, that's they who got funds their, the schools, it, the it, private it, schools or whatever. No, no, Am, Amway was a multi-level was the granddaddy of them all for multi-level oh, yeah, marketing yeah. schemes. Oh yeah, sure. And yeah. and and that's where the family's money came from. Damn. Sure. But now old, she's old, old old man and old lady made a ton of money, and she married into the family. And her brother, of course, is that asshole that runs uh, Blackwater. Sure, and we know market 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 level management. We know that the marketing. We know this is a scam. The whole damn thing is a scam. People oh, understand yeah. that they're scamming cults oh, now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so, and then she, her, her family is also big into like privatizing education because that's where they make a lot of money from these days. Exactly. And mm-hmm. and so here's the thing: they wanted to dismantle the uh, education system, the public education system, for the same reason that they want to collapse the welfare system, which Trump was also aggressively active on trying to make happen. And the reason is that they want people, they want they want to build it back up, the system back up as a privatized system with Christians in control. They want a baby boom, and Trump was bragging about this just yesterday. They're looking for a baby boom. They're trying to create a baby boom. If they want to overwhelm the system, and privatize it because if you have a whole lot of poor people that have no place to go but a church in order to get food and shelter and you know emergency substandard versions of every all the basic human necessities then there's an opportunity here for the churches to recruit these desperately vulnerable families um into their religious grift so that in the meantime if they've got all these privatized education centers they're going to be indoctrination centers because they're going to be Christian themed and they're going to be conservative Christian themed. And so they're doing everything they can to reinvent the system so that what happens is that they raise a generation of children in these churches and in these indoctrination centers that they call private education so that it can break the pendulum permanently in the political system so that they can get rid of all the people that are left of their, their idea of center. And so that they can get it so that they can turn America into a theocracy. Right now, Dr. Price knows enough about religious history to know why a theocracy is a bad idea. He right. knows he, he knows how political rhetoric works. He knows how propaganda works. Somebody that doesn't know, I kind of give them a sort of a pass. They didn't get caught up to speed, but he knows. And he's not religious. And this is what I get. Like, same thing with Pine Creek. He's not religious. How do you not understand that? empowering the far right political machine is automatically empowering these Christian nationalist fundamentalist assholes that want to turn America into a violently dangerous theocracy. How, how can you not understand that empowering one means empowering the other? We're going to end and if, and I'm not saying that those people are in a position to take over the country, but man, they came pretty close because Trump was in the white house for four damn years. And we got Paula white and all these people praying around him and it, Trump is such a grifter. He he doesn't believe in Jesus. Nobody's stupid enough to think Trump actually believes in Christianity. He thinks those people are idiots. But they were a means to an end. He made the same deal with that demographic that Hitler made with the same demographic back in the day. You guys empower me and I'll empower you. Because it's all about power. That's all it is. It's a bunch of mafia grifters. So just, just to wrap this up, I promise. Um, Very good. It, so that's that's how it all ties in. So when Trump appointed DeVos, DeVos, however you want to say her name, and gave her the empowerment to do this, he knew what she was doing. He didn't care. He has no investment at all in humanity's future. Everything he did was only about himself. He didn't drain the swamp. He made it more of a swamp. He put the swampiest people you can imagine in positions of power. Absolutely. Somebody who wants to somebody who intentionally wants to destroy the public education system shouldn't be in charge of it an oil exec shouldn't be in charge of the environmental protection agency right right? and the fascism ran deep when trump was in power he told the um cdc what they were allowed and what they weren't allowed to say in their public um health assessments their annual releases he's like you cannot use the following words they and he also told NASA, "You're not allowed to do climate research anymore." So NASA had to form a an underground, like an underground railroad of mm. data science and information with the other scientists in the world in order to continue to be relevant to the ongoing studies of climate science. Because Trump knew that he had to appease his power base, and his power base was on that whole climate change isn't really a thing bullshit because what they mm. really are they're backed by billionaires who want to push 
the infrastructures they already have in place for big oil and things like that. The last thing they want to do is convert over to green energy because they've crunched the numbers and figured out that they're losing money if we do that. So they don't care. So they want to completely delegitimize the whole entire um, field of science for studying climatology in order to make sure that we get to continue to rely on big oil because that's where their money comes from. So it, it, for Dr. Price to not know some mm. of this shit, okay. But to not know any of this shit, like, come on. I don't buy that for a second. Dr. Price doesn't give a fuck about humanity. Y'all can go to hell as far as he cares. He's uh, he's just, he's he's ethically lazy and irresponsible. And he can sing it to the choir any way he wants it about how he's, you know, he's pro-humanity and not a racist at all and all this other shit. But that's just bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. For him to come on TV, I'm one of the what, Gnostic Informants channel and say, I don't even know what I did wrong. It's not like he hasn't been told since then. People keep telling him, here's what you did wrong, asshole. And he's like, I don't see a problem. <laughs> like, yeah. Really? Yeah. So that's, I just wanted to get all that said. Crunch it in as quickly as I can. We can move on. <laughs> no, I, I really appreciate it. I And, and I agree 100%. A hundred percent. And being so rude in this post. And then he had another one. Where the Redskins are being renamed because they don't want them to be Redskins. The Indians. Coloring them by the skin color and such. And so he says, no, we should name them the Savages. Now, he told me that he thought well, he's just being funny and being a joke. But at the end of the day, when people are literally trying to get away from ugly things and you're not bringing betterment to society, you're only trying to cause – you're throwing wrenches in the whole system to try and conserve it and make it stay the same way. It wasn't long ago that gays couldn't marry legally. It wasn't long ago that blacks had to drink at certain water fountains and go to certain bathrooms. It wasn't long ago that women couldn't vote, right? Right. And here we have this very, very big issue socially, and he's only adding fuel to the fire and in a negative way at that. So it, it caught my attention. People were tagging me that I was interviewing this guy, and I even had Dr. Joshua Bowen who approached me and said, hey, man, we work together. I know you're better than this. This has got to stop. This is not okay. And I tried to – I had arguments you don't even realize – I had arguments with Joshua Bowen on the phone where I'm yelling at him and it would look silly for me to reenact it, but I'm yelling at him trying to go compartmentalize it. He's not a racist and I'm trying to defend Bob, but Bob's not even trying to defend Bob. Bob is literally putting me in the worst position possible as someone who's running a YouTube channel with him trying to do business with him and to continue educating the world in the Bible, he damn sure wasn't helping himself. So he is making these remarks and then I'm getting all these people tagging me on Twitter, Facebook. People are commenting in my comment sections on my YouTube channel. And this is not who I am. And I'm wrestling with cognitive dissonance here between what Bob is saying and doing and who he is. I'm like, this guy can't be that way. So I'm like, we got to do something. We got to do something. This is before the Pine Creek interview he did with Bob, where Doug interviewed Bob. This is before that. And before I did my This Is Goodbye video, which I did that after the Pine Creek show, me and my wife call Bob, and I express to him how bad this looks and how it looks racist to me. But my voice had no impact, especially politically. He's so staunch right wing. There was no getting through. I said, Bob, you need to apologize for the things you said. If we're going to keep working together on Myth Vision, I need you to apologize. And I am in this really bad spot. I can't, words can't express what I'm experiencing in my stomach and in my life because I value him. I look up to him. He's a hero figure. He's the master. And I'm looking at my wife while I'm on the phone and I'm looking at her and I'm saying, you need to apologize. I got him on speakerphone actually. And he's being hesitant, not wanting to do it. And his wife, even Carol comes in and starts to go, Bob, Bob. And he goes, no, I will not apologize to the woke mob. 
I will not do this. He was so upset Holy and his pride was in the way shit. so much. He wouldn't, he was not willing to apologize at all. And he told me, I'll just step away. I do worry about your financial situation with Myth Vision, oh, but I'll just, no. I'll just walk away. All right. As if that. Oh, no. Right. right. In other words, you need me, bitch, but all right, I'll leave. Oh. Oh, no. There's so much here. Um, I really, James, I want you to speak to this because I try to make this point about <laughs> Christianity. Like, there's a sense in which, of course, my situation with my family is something I can't expect everybody in our community to do to have this sort of situation where you just, you know, speak truth to power, right? Um, but... I feel like you've spoken to this to where if you're in a relationship with somebody and they don't take you seriously or, or they're not dealing with you on equal footing, you're in inherently in an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so many people in our community, the reason we don't talk about our lack of faith with the, 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 our friends and family is at some level because we're afraid of our suspicion that we know that's true. Like I used to have this thing. I used to always suspect that Jesus is more important than Jason in our fam in my, in my family. And I think a lot of us have that same suspicion. Like if you really went there with your family, they dig their heels in, they double down, they, you know, and you, and then you'd have to realize, holy shit, they're actually really in this ugly place. Right, like the, the, the problematic, the calls are coming from inside the house. Right, the problematic Christians are the Christians in my life, not not the weirdos on YouTube. Right. Um, and um, if you had to do that, it, you'd also realize kind of at the same time, and like, holy shit, like I can't get through to them. Like, you know, me sitting down with that. Right, and, and so I just I just think a lot of us paper over those relationships with like, oh, I love them so much and they love me so much. And and what I hear a lot of times, no, they're just a bully. Like they've just really thoroughly manipulated you into a place where you're afraid to challenge them. You can't even speak to them honestly about who you are. Now, cool. I'm willing to just let you not confront whoever you don't want to confront because you can't handle that. Like, you know, you don't owe me an explanation, right? Right. But I'm not going to pretend that they're such a wonderful person and that you have such a great, wonderful, healthy relationship with them. Like, you, you don't. You don't. Like, they, 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 they've just literally manipulated you, and it's worked, and you've, and you've just called it a fucking day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, right. Uh, but, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm re-preaching your sermon, so I wanted you to say that piece about the unequal rela relationships again. Got to right. grab my charger so, real quick. Go ahead, James. So having learned so many things the hard way, and I, I don't recommend that route if you could avoid it, 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 it occurred to me at one point, I'm like, there's a common theme to all these different forms of abuse, even in domestic relationships, but not only in domestic relationships. There is an unequalness to it, a dramatic unequalness, where one person takes way more than they give back and where they feel entitled to it, especially after it's been going on for a while. And one of the things I recognized eventually is that when you enter a dynamic relationship with another person that's going to be in your social landscape for at least a prolonged period of time, you're involved in a negotiation, an auction of sorts. You're negotiating your place in that social landscape and your value relative to them. And once they feel like the bidding is over, that you've established who's worth what, whose time is worth more, whose voice is worth more, whose needs are worth more, uh, whose story takes precedence. Once you've established that, th they're not going to renegotiate with you later. And you come back and say, you know what? I realize I've been selling myself short and worth more than that. They're going to be like, no, no, bidding is closed. You know, it, it, you, you settled for a low bid. You tolerated a certain level of disrespect from me. You, you've accepted that my place in this dichotomy, this social dichotomy, our arrangement between us, is such that I matter more. You've accepted it. You don't get to change your mind later. Right. And if you try to, they feel very, very hurt and like, we had a deal. We established 
Right. 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 And that and that speaks greatly to the abuse inherent to certain religions. I don't even need to say which ones. Right. And and also to the political sphere, right? It just the, the political sphere is a special kind of beast in any event, because there's this idea, this wrong idea that there's not enough resources for everybody. There are. If we quit hoarding them and if we if we you know yep. enforce the way people should interact with each other there's more than enough resources for everybody yeah but they've got this idea that we've got to fight we've since somebody's going to have to go out and die horribly it's not going to be my tribe it's going to be the other tribes right right and they've convinced themselves that um people who are not white for example are sort of beasts of burden that they're that they are these savage people who They've done as much as they can to tame, but there's a limit to how much they can tame them and train them. And so you just need to mm -hmm. be great, grateful for what they, the scraps that they've given you and allowed for you. And you need to see it as an opportunity. And this is a very conservative stoic idea that people shouldn't be complaining about the injustices in the system because the injustices are there as an opportunity for something to struggle against and right. come on top right. against. My black so, ass needs to practice democracy and being oppressed is the best way for me to learn what civic engagement might be able to do in my life. Right. They see it also as a refining process. It's like... If you think about it, Superman, if he existed in real life, he wouldn't have had muscles because he doesn't weigh anything you, and nothing is heavy to him. He would have been super flabby in real life because there's no gravity. There's nothing to struggle with. <laughs> right? Right. You know, think yeah. about that. Yeah. And so this is kind of the idea that they have that all the injustices in the system are a form of gravity and that you should be thankful that it's harder for you to take three steps than it is for them because they have to rely on the fact that they're just made of the right stuff by divine providence they're inherently strong and don't need struggles to overcome but these lesser creatures they do need struggles to overcome and so they're more than happy to give mm -hmm. you the ideal environment to struggle against where it's not fair and you should be glad that it's not fair because if it was fair, then you would have the and Pine Creek talks about this, this, this quality of outcome, right? You'd you'd simply have everything handed to you and you'd never you'd never grow to your potential because it came to you too easily. Right. Because but the these idea same is to strive. Yeah. Right. These same assholes look for every opportunity they can to not have to strive. They're born 100%. into wealth. 100%. They get all these special privileged opportunities that other people don't get. And then they pat themselves on the back for it. Right. You know, they, they, they waste more money than they make. And nobody counts that. They only count the wins and that's the misses. Right. You know, and if you think about it, Trump's a great example of that. He lost way more money than he's ever made. Right. And he, the money he started off with wasn't his. Right. He didn't have to earn shit. The same with Elon Musk. So he, by definition, it shouldn't even be considered an, a successful businessman, according to most mm -hmm. people's standards, right? Which would be like, right. you generated some pro net profit in the world somehow right right so but, but getting back to the point yes yeah. it's it's these social inequality is a form of abuse mm, and yes this, this is key to everything that's 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 wrong with trying to justify social inequality right it, it hurts people it's not just technically unfair or technically abusive it's highly consequential and who can live to be an adult in this world and not look around them and see just how consequential it is to the unempowered people in our society in the world at large these mm -hmm. people did not choose to be born into the disadvantaged situations that they're in right and i don't i don't care how much true grit you have and in, in your true nature of your character if you are denied right. If you are denied clean water and adequate food and transportation and education, if you're denied education, you're just going to grow up not understanding what your opportunities are in the world. You're not going to know much beyond the limits of your village, right? right? You're not going to understand the world in a larger context to know where opportunities might even be, let alone how to get there and then utilize those opportunities to your advantage. You're not going to know. How could you know? It's not, you know, knowledge doesn't get imparted through magic, right? Right. So there's just the basic fundamentals that everybody needs in order to have a stable platform to build from is what the far right alt right assholes are looking for every opportunity to deny the non-privileged peoples because they don't want to have to share resources or power that's really what it comes down to 
all this other rationalizations they use about the weight of of adversity and struggling against it makes against it makes you stronger. Yeah. I mean, they can look at Derek and see that he struggled and it made him stronger. But at the same time, Derek was born in America as a white man, and he had, you know, he had a platform to work from, um, and he had a high IQ as well. Like right. I don't, I don't know how he won the the genetic genetic lottery so well. But he's not just stupidly handsome. He's brilliant. He retains the information he learns. He understands it in a practical and dynamic way. I mean, he's I got nothing on Derek. Nothing, right? <laughs> but but it doesn't change the fact that he struggled and he overcame. But right. if you go back in time and take this advantage and that advantage and that advantage away there's no way to know how far he would have made there's no way to know there are plenty of people in this world that are every bit as intelligent and every bit as um determined to make it and they just don't know how and they're born into a situation that is beyond what they can thrive in maybe they mm. survive but they're not going to mm. thrive in that situation right and this is what we want resolved we don't want this is the thing about free education free education isn't a gimme it's not charity because if we want a country, let alone a world that isn't stupid, then we have to provide an education to them. Now, providing an education isn't charity because the people that get the education still have to work for it. They have to show up. They have to sit down. They got to sharpen their damn pencil. And they got to learn. They got to spend hours and hours and hours pouring through books and asking hard questions and doing the math literally and metaphorically. Right? It is not charity because they have to earn it. Knowledge. It's bad enough that we charge anybody for knowledge in this world where knowledge is the most plentifully abundant thing that there is, right? The, the capitalism, that it charges people for knowledge is just an absurd concept that I just can't even wrap my head around. And we've become way too accustomed to the idea that that's okay. But mm. all we're saying is give people that don't have access to the knowledge access to the knowledge. Yep. It's still up to them to show up and learn it. Don't make them learn it. But if they put in the work to learn it, celebrate that. Don't call them charity cases. Celebrate the work that they put into it, the accountability and the effort and the time and the sacrifice that goes into that. And then make sure there's nothing in their way to succeed. That's all we're asking. I, we're not saying good. No, no, good, good. So, yeah, that's it, really. That's what we're advocating for. This, this whole idea of a woke tribe. What the hell even is that other than just being awakened from a, an old paradigm? It's growth. That's what growth is. When you're growing and progressing as a person or as a group or a society or an entire species, it means that you're waking up to more and more realities. That you're becoming more aware of things. That's what it means to be awakened. You're becoming aware of something that you weren't before. That's progress. It's something we should demand of ourselves and demand of our species. And if we don't, then our species isn't going to even exist much longer. We are at a precipice. This is the time where we either pull our shit together collectively or our species simply is going to suffer not just horrifically, but they're just going to die in the process. We'll be, we'll be gone within 100 years. Humanity won't exist anymore if we don't pull our crap together. Now, I think there is a real chance we could. Steven Pinker, in his book about the, the better angels of our nature, certainly recognizes the upward trend of progress and thinks we do have it in us. He thinks we will pull our asses out of the fire and make things happen. But I can tell you that people that have platforms and they push this conspiracy theorist, stupid far-right, alt-right nonsense, they're making it harder for everyone. Because they're out there promoting fascism and violence and racism, but they're not even honest enough to call it what it is. They can't even just say, "Yeah, I'm a racist," and this is this is you know why I'm a racist. Right. They gotta say, "Oh, I'm not a racist," but then say racist shit. Oh, I'm not a fascist, but then say and do right. fascist shit. Right. And it's like, come on, stop gaslighting us. If you want to be evil, if and if you think that that somehow philosophically justified, then just say so. They just say, yeah, I'm kind of an asshole that doesn't give a shit about anybody but other white men, right? But here's why. And then I can at least respect that and disagree with you. you don't come to me and tell, you know, shit and tell me it's chocolate. Stop it. Absolutely. I I um I have a hard time not believing that there isn't just something outright 
anti-equity and anti-equality with these people. I mean, they're, they're, it, it really gets, I, I was like, the, I, I just I just think we all have to accept that there are bad people in the room who are enemies of progress and needed to be treated like such. And we got to stop giving them the courtesy of assuming they're simply misguided. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, I and, assumed it at okay. first. I, I wanted to believe it, that he was just misguided, misinformed. But then when I saw so many people try to educate Dr. Price, and the same with Doug from Pine Creek, and it just, he just, he couldn't, he won't, he won't, he's too, he's married to it. He's emotionally so invested. His sense of identity and his emotions and the way that they're wired, and he doesn't even realize, people like that don't even realize how key their emotions are hatred and fear and arrogance and all the things that go mm. along with narcissism and the entitlement they don't even recognize their own emotions happening but when you talk about compassion and accountability and and empathy oh well you need to stop thinking you're with your emotions quit being all touchy-feely with your emotions right and that's just sociopaths saying quit being quit being a decent human being that's all that is the sociopath saying quit being a decent human being it's making me look bad and it's annoying me stop it and I'm like, no, I'm tired of apologizing for being a decent fucking human being. You right. should be apologizing because you are not, right? right? At least stay away from voting. Stay away from a voting booth. Stay away from children. Stay away from schools. Stay away from any platform where you're going to be infect infecting people with your bullshit. Because it's everybody's business when people push this hateful, divisive, willfully ignorant rhetoric out into the social landscape in which we all have to live because they're polluting our air metaphorically and literally. And it's nobody's right to do that. Nobody's. Yeah. Amen, James. All right, let's go ahead and roll some tape. That was just somehow going to fix everything. And even to this day, I'd wrestled between should I have made any videos literally cutting him off or should I have walked away and been silent about not having him on mm. anymore? And people go, why aren't you interviewing Bob anymore? Why aren't you interviewing Bob anymore? I wasn't interested in that for two reasons. I needed to express my views and how I felt about this whole issue. It was something that I needed to do because I had been changing and Bob Never really had the time to listen to me. I always didn't want to step on his toes. I was very sensitive to his voice and not him listening to me. And now I'm about to share with you something that I've never shared with, but maybe one or two people in private, and this has never been made public. In fact, the people that this is about, who are my dear friends, literally have never heard this. This was the email. Before we get to this email, I got this is important. I want you to to stay tuned. This is very important. Bob tells me tells me hell no, and immediately I knew he put my family on an altar like Abraham's about to put Isaac up there and stick the dagger in him. It was either my family or him, and I knew there was no way in hell I'll ever betray my family. So I decided I'm going to stick with what I knew was the right thing to do ethically, but also for my family, which is why I kept the interviews up with him to begin with after I let him go. I had justified it in my mind because I need to make sure my family is okay. They're number one. So I ended up talking to Bob. The next day, he jumps on Pine Creek Show and right before it, I said, Bob, because I'm still wrestling, I still want him to try to apologize. I spoke to him right before you went on that show, Bob, you need to show that you're not this bad, ugly person. You need to show you're not racist. You need to show. And that Pine Creek interview, for me, buried it. I knew I said, hell no, fuck this. I am taking a stand at this point. I am done. And Bob thinks that I betrayed. Man, I just got to speak on this, man. Like, it's crazy because... Again, for a lot of us, that this was the this was like the coming out party for both these dudes. <laughs> um, and it's crazy to me that right now we are still dealing with an issue where people have not made it clear 
where they stand in relation to people like Doug. And it bothers me. Part of the reason I tried to call out the situation with Doug, the situation with our mutual friends with Doug, is because I really wanted to handle it in a way where it was like about the issues. You know, there's, there's problems here. Let's, let's show people what the problems are. But there's a deeper level that I've only really started to speak to recently, quite frankly, because of the vulnerability involved, where it's like, now I, I want to speak about my pain personally because it feels like somehow it wasn't obvious or clear enough that you're operating from a place of feeling hurt and, and affected by the things that are said. And to me, like, Doug takes it even way past Bob Price because he has a channel where he does these things. He has a second channel dedicated to doing these things. And because he's made a lot of his weaponized content about or in direct response to our community. And so it's, it's, it's not even though you just have you you know some racist buddy or uncle that you got to deal with once in a while at the holidays it's like no you have a, a racist buddy who actively makes bigoted content oh yeah and you've got a bigoted buddy who makes his bigoted content about your marginalized friends directly like, oh, I just sat down with Stephanie Helm. Let me make some shit about her. Oh, I just sat down with that Jay Bundy. Let me throw his ass all the way under the bus. Oh, that Lena everybody loves? Yeah, let me tell you how fucking weird my conversation with that nut job was. Right? And then we've got people in our community that are like, I don't know, friends with my anti-racist community that supports me every fucking day or be friends with the bigot. I, I just can't make up my mind. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm confused. I mean, six and a half, uh, uh, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. I, I'm just not sure what, you understand what I'm saying? And you're like, what? And then when people then try to act like they can't take a stand against certain people because of their quote unquote, you know, associations or we're friends or we, we hung out or whatever. I'm like, Derek to me just is putting them to shame because he's showing you what allyship looks like. I hate to say it. I, I, I thought, I thought this level of morality you figure out by kindergarten, certainly by second or third grade. And I high school at the latest, how a lot of y'all ended up in your thirties and forties without figuring out that you do the right thing and you let the chips fall where they may in terms of consequences. But Derek is putting them to shame because, again, he's telling you the whole story of how, guess what? When my mentor stepped out of line, when, um, you know, somebody who was really helping out or part of my business, I thought, oh, guess what? They had to get called out. I had to, I had to stop supporting them. And it just is what it is. And... Some of y'all out here crying like you can't cut ties with people who you ain't never shared a meal with or never made a dollar with. Like, I'm just not trying to hear it. And, you know, real allyship is recognizing when people behave badly and they have bigotry, there's antisocial behavior, it has consequences. It's going to have consequences. Either you can be on the side of the people dishing it or the people taking it. Um, but it, it just, it, again, I'm just very proud of Derek for 
doing what was right. And it says a lot to me that he really did see that Pine Creek stream and just know, like, okay, this is where Bob's at. And, and I do, okay, we're just not going to, we can't do this anymore. And, 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 and coming to the same conclusions about Doug and it just, it just says a lot to me because it means that Derek saw it. And even though he doesn't, you know, sort of put Pine Creek and, and some of these people on blast the way I do, I just want people to realize that like, yo, it's not just us. Like these people make this content. They put the shit out there on the internet. It's fucking obvious. And in, in my opinion, you should be ashamed of yourself if you're looking the other way or asking other marginalized people to look the other way. Um, if you just see what these people do, you listen to what they say, their shit's fucked up, and that should be the end of it. We out here making excuses for people like this. I don't understand it. Truth. And I also apologize for not muting my mic when I was typing. Uh, I didn't read this till now. But no, I worries. no, no worries. No worries. Wait, then let me so, read you the oh, email. Sorry. Go ahead, James. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to clarify something. I'm not part of a woke mob. I'm not part of any mob. I don't wear a label. Hey, and I'm, I... <laughs> this makes sense. Yeah. This makes so, sense. Good, James. I don't think tribally like that. I don't give a shit. Now, I realize some people here do, right? They think right. of, you know, atheism as a tribe. I think of secularism, progressivism, left, leftism, scientism, um, uh, whatever it they, they, sure. there are some people in a community that think tribally and and, and i i just kind of like cringe a little bit but i kind of don't care i don't think of myself tribally i am not i don't even wear the humanist label because it clashes with my misanthropy right like sure <laughs> <laughs> yep. clashes with my anti-natalism <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> well I, I don't, I don't, I've been, I'm out about that, right? I'm not even closeted about <laughs> right. that. Like, so, you know, I do make time sometimes to disagree with liberals, for example. For sure. example, just as, just as an example, liberals tend to put too much stock in government, for my taste. Y'all, y'all think that somehow that you're going to win this political tug of war in some time in the near future and that life's going to get great for everybody and the world's going to be peaceful and love and roses and flowers or even just the nation. Right, nope, we're going to nope, become nope. Europe plus any minute now. Nope, it's, it's not not realistic. And even Europe plus isn't, isn't as plus as it thinks it is, right? Right, right. So, it, you know, it, no. It, you need to take care, better care of yourselves and, and your own stuff. Stop looking at the government to solve your problems because the government ain't on your side. Right. It just really ain't. And, and it's not going to be tomorrow no matter how you vote because they only give you voting options that empower them not to dethrone them right sure. so you're going to have to worry about you know learn some gardening and and learn some other skills or maybe buy your way out of the system and go to some better country or if you're going to make your stand here you know honestly do whatever you can to or depend less on the government so this is where i disagree with liberals just as an example i don't right. think tribal when I think about, you know, the, the problems that I have with conservative or I should say far right and alt right um, ideologies and attitudes, I'm like, look, why can't you guys just let people live in peace? Because LGBT rights are not special rights and privileges. They are human rights. Right. The, sa the same thing with women's right to vote. The same thing with black people's rights to marry white people. Right. These are human rights rights these are not racial rights these are not sex specific rights right these are just human mm. fucking rights and this this is where i'm coming from so i'm not part of some tribe where i'm trying to like get my tribe leveraged over the other tribe i'm just like can't you guys just quit being assholes that's my political party that's right. my political foundation entirely right. stop being assholes and, yeah. and and if and if being anti-asshole is a political party and it's not theirs then they need to take some inventory and say, how come we're not the anti-asshole party? Ask yourself, why yeah. you're not the anti-asshole party? Yeah, like, It's just that goddamn simple for me. Yeah. I have nothing nothing at all to do with tribal narratives or anything else. I don't give a shit yeah. about any of that stuff. I, I, I don't, I'm not as bothered by the tribalistic type narrative because I, I think a certain degree of it is just baked into humanity. But I just sure. see it as my group and I'm just interested you know my tribe or group or whatever is the 
the people in my right. community that I that I happen to care about. Sure. And I think that's just basic, right? Like I've I've got a you know we all rec- sure. cry on sure. a certain network and we want to take care of that network. Yeah, and so for me, it's just like our our network is just aware. I don't know how you could not be that there are all of these people in the network who are not getting a fair shake, right? And right. we're just, to your point, just saying don't be assholes so that, you know, every everybody could have a, 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 sh- a shot at this thing here. Um, and, but yeah, it's, it's sort of used against us. And, and, and so I've just, I'm sort of like, yeah, fine. Because I, I do think the tribalism is really amplified on the other side. And so I'm, I'm just like, well, then fine. That's the situation we find ourselves in. Right. You know, I, uh, sure. but, but I'm, I'm with you. And then the woke thing is, is, you know, I often say, I, I don't feel worthy of the, 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 the honor. Right. Um, you know, because I, I don't often feel, um, caught up or like, I'm, you know, aware of, you know, as much as I should be aware of, and I can, and I can tell you all of the times, even in recent history where, you know, the, 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 the the cultural milieu has shifted forward in a meaningful, progressive way. And I got caught up way late, like, cause I was living under a rock, you know, just cause of simple shit like grad school, like, you know, grad school, Mm -hmm. you don't, you know, really, you, you could spend about a decade really not paying attention to the news or social media, any of that shit, because you're just in a right. very, it's like being off at sea. Like, oh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck's been going on. Oh, oh, really? Culture's changed in the last decade? You don't say. But yeah, but like, the, but again, now I'm like, you know, hey, stay woke, you know, <laughs> because I'm like, you know, it's just, it's, again, I, I can't imagine a world in which it's a bad thing but the more and more aware of it i be i've become i'm like i almost do support like dragging these people kicking and screaming like again you could pass some legislation that says an educator can lose their job if they misgender a student on purpose and refuse to accept correction mm-hmm Cause that ain't that that that's just not gonna be a problem for most of us. We just we just not gonna really have no that you could pass some shit that says yeah uh, everybody that needs gender affirming care gets it. That's 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 federal legislation. You have to provide gender affirming care for people who need it. Most of us would be like, cool. Could we throw in some cookies? Like, right. <laughs> like, right. I mean, like it, it, the stuff that they. Are accusing this woke mob of I'm like right. I, I I can't imagine mustering energy to resist. <laughs> I, <laughs> right? I mean they're like how dare you guys want to treat everybody as equals? How dare you? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Go ahead, Steph. It, they, it, it, there's a question as to yes, their rights. Who gets to vindicate those rights and by what means? I mean, if if you're if the only way if the only options available for you to vindicate your rights of life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. The only option available to you is to do it on your own or with your tribe, muster a tribe and arm yourselves, put yourselves in a little compound, you know, <laughs> yeah. be, be David Koresh right. uh, or, or the Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh or, you know, or, or whatever right if that's the only if that's the only venue available then you're going to wind up in a situation where people are going after so so when you say you don't trust government the whole idea is you need to have the government that you that that you can that you can and trust with uh uh vindicating people's rights yeah now, yeah the, the, the uh, the conservatives would say uh, the conservatives tend to want to take people's rights away for for the benefit of a group mm-hmm. rather than being broadly accepted uh, broadly accepting of uh, 
these this group's equities, this this group's equities. How do we balance them? How do we how do we have a just society where there's not chaos? Mm. Uh, conservatives say, "Fuck that! We're just going to do it with law. The people we don't like, we're going to throw in jail." Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not you know that's not exact. That's that's n neither uh, vindicating rights nor is it. Uh, uh, promoting any any sort of justice, whether it's legal justice or otherwise. So I don't know how you get away from finding a mechanism, some mechanism. Yeah, I I think I think. How you gotta... do you vindicate people's rights? I mean, certainly at some at some points you vindicate people's rights by, you know, doing what the Israelis are doing right now, getting in the streets. Or doing, right. or doing what uh, you know, doing what happened in the fifties and sixties, getting getting in the streets, uh, because you because of a failure, because of a systemic failure of of the primary duty of government to uh, vindicate the rights of people, yes, for a, for a good education, et cetera, and so forth. Yeah, I think, and I think ideally you got to walk and chew gum at the same time because mm. I think similar to the Pine Creeks and the Bob Prices, you got to recognize when a person or a system is not there, it's, it's not doing what it needs to do for you, right? So, you know, in a, in a sense, when the system isn't working on your behalf, you've got to accept and, that currently the system isn't working on your behalf while... And, encouraging is, along the path of doing so yeah and this is the problem with price's outlook particularly as regards black lives matter which is the first thing that got eric that, that got sure. Derek's attention uh, with it's like how can you not see uh, that you know six cops holding a guy down choking him to death in the streets Nobody would have known had it not been for iPhones and all this other stuff. Right. But all of a sudden, it's like, well, you had it coming. Why? For passing a counterfeit twenty, which nobody's ever re really actually proved that he right. did. Right. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Uh, and, and he probably didn't. It's right. like it, it's just like this isn't it. That, you know, this example is an example of horrible. Well, it's at best miscalculation at worst systemic racism yeah and and to just get that tribal to say no no we in order to vindicate my rights we need to give the cops the power to uh, to arrest every gd yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah. throw them in the pokey or right. if that's inconvenient why not just kneel on them and choke him to death in the street Mm -hmm. I mean, come on! I didn't That's know that was not... the first time. Absolutely. You know, it, it, it's it's like no, of course it wasn't the first time. It's been, you know, it's been, Christ Almighty. We, we know American history, do we not? I mean, we know. Well, we've even heard, that, even that cop, I bet he's done that. No, before. no, 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 no. I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but but you know, we we know uh, for example after example after example. Uh, and and it's and it gets old after a while. Right. And, and that's when that's how come. When it gets old enough, people hit the streets. Mm, yeah. And and it, it you know, with the right combination of political circumstances, actions are taken. We live in a time when the right combination of political circumstances do not exist for act for real action to be taken. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, I don't know if things got tremendously better after Watts, but they got a little bit better. And the Panthers had a good deal to do with that, you know, when they they did a lot of good work. Um, Black Panthers it's back always, in the day, yeah. It, it's always politics. It's always politics, and it doesn't always have to be the government, but it always has to be some form of organization where it, where people's rights are vindicated. Yeah, and I think the more and more that that happens, it should create some sort of interdependence where a government that takes care of some of these basics fades to the background, right? Because there's a certain, ideally a social safety net in place, ideally people are getting equitable rights and equitable treatment and equitable services. And then the James's point, well, you're not gonna just sit around and 
you, you know, rely on government handouts. You're going to, you're going to build your community. You're going to work. It's, 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 it's more that the government won't be in the way in the lack of a government protecting you won't be right. And, and that's part of the problem is if we didn't have so many people determined to weaponize the government against us, we wouldn't need so many government remedies, right? And the, the situation is now right. we've got to take more political action because people won't essentially leave us alone to build our own communities. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, See, that's the wonderful thing about the legal system is if you can get, if you get in front of a judge, you, you've at least got a dice rolls chance that the judge isn't bought and paid for by billionaires with far right interests. You've got, yeah, but a you've got to be a billionaire to get in front of the judge in the first yeah, place. Yeah, well, it depends. I mean, we, we do sometimes get stuff in the Supreme Court, though, right. through, right. through various agencies yeah. that represent the, com the common good. So every once in a while, when that happens, you know, it becomes a law. And then the, the, the billionaire assholes that are trying to pull society down, well, they just have to suck it up because they lost this one, right? And so right. Uh, there are some things people can do that does change things, that does help. Yeah. I'm just pretty pessimistic about the whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's you know, yeah, it's not an absolute. Oh, my, but you can't give up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can. I mean, I'm just <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can. If you can. Yeah, yeah you can. sure you can. But you once, once I retire, like, I don't want to think about any of it anymore, but I haven't retired yet, so I'm still in the fight with you. Guys. <laughs> All right, let's roll this tape. After I made that This Is Goodbye video, I made it the same day or the day after Pine Creek did the live stream with him. This was the email that he sent me I'm reading it out loud. Cause I don't want anyone seeing his emails or anything like that to cause him any more problems. Derek, I was astonished to hear your, this is goodbye post. Nothing you had said even scant hours before prepared me for this. I was quite willing to drop out of myth vision, though I did express my suspicion that it might pose as much of a danger to your enterprise in either case. But in your post, you went way beyond what you had said mm. in conversation. Rather than admitting to deplatforming me out of fear of repri reprisals by the woke mob, you actually joined the woke mob. Wow. Endorsing the endorsing their slanders, no longer arguing that any that my views were nobody's business and did not taint my scholarly work. You now said you disagreed with my bad ideas and was horrified to learn via the Pine Creek interview that they were intolerably worse yet. Thus, you said you decided to dump me. The truth is that you were cowardly submitting to the threats of the cancel culture fascist. Well, loyalty has a high cost and so does disloyalty. By publicly slandering me and betraying me, you have crossed the line. You have made it impossible to continue either a professional, professional or personal relationship between us. Do what you will with the interview. This is just, just the right wing. And again, a lot of people on the left do the same thing, buying into the right wing narrative of, I will not be bullied by your anti-bullying. And listen, gang, it's sort of like, Stephanie, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it kind of reminds me of the Anna Kasparian thing to where you buy into a narrative, you spit it out because, you, you know, you've, you've, you've bought the emotional hook that the right wing is trying to create with the narrative. And then you say it as though it's, it's this you know, really legitimized part of the discourse when in reality you are literally just spewing a right wing talking point. And in Bob Price's case, it's probably delivered because he actually is a radical right winger. But but look, folks, th this is how social consequences work. And you're not being bullied when you're being asked to show some accountability for bad behavior or being insensitive. Go ahead, I think, Seth, in, Anna, I think in Anna Kasparian's case, uh, it shows the effectiveness of, of right-wing talking points mm, and the way, yeah. they get, the way they get pushed out there. So that it doesn't sound altogether that weird. Right. And, and, and if you're not, if you're not uh, paying attention, paying close attention to a particular topic, you might be uh you might be tempted to say don't call me don't 
don't call me a person with a uterus or a person who menstruates or any of this sort of thing. Uh, right. Not un, not comprehending yes. that it's not to a first it's not directed at you. Right. <laughs> and, and it's not and it's not directed to you. Right. Or to women. Right. It's directed so as to make it less difficult for people who do menstruate and well, do require access to OBGYN services uh, to access those services without being called women, like if they're trans men or non-binary people. So right. it's not directed, so, but, the, but the talking point is as if, and, and I agree with Anna Kasparian, I don't want to be defined by my body parts either. Right. I and I and and that's why this is an effective talking point from the right, right, right. from the right wing, because centrists, liberals, centrist liberals, moderates, people that aren't engaged in this kind of conversation and don't give a second thought to the fact that non-binary people and trans men exist because all of the topic of conversation around trans issues always has to do with trans women. Uh, you know, this is, that's why it's so effective and it's why Anna got sucked into it. And I'm sorry that she did. Yeah. But now that she's sucked into it, uh, the, the, the tendency towards anybody is to be defensive and say, I take great umbrage at being criticized for saying something stupid that I really didn't know anything about. And I don't really care to do any further inquiry on it. I'm right. You're wrong. Fuck off. Right. That's where the that's where the thing is. Now, P Price, on the other hand, is a proud bigot. Right. You know, he just he doesn't care. Pine Creek, he doesn't care. All trans women are ugly, according to him, except for the ones that he didn't right. know were trans that he met at the that he met at the at the country club and yeah. and uh and, you know that were just sort of sitting around enjoying a cocktail. Right. But you know, but how would he know? And he doesn't care because his his whole his whole thinking is clouded by he's invested right. in the notion that all trans women are ugly. Yeah. Anna Kasparian, she's not there. But the problem is, push her enough and she'll get there. It's how Joanne Rowling went rolling down the hill. Right. So for me, I was I was also trying to point out that this is another example in in here it is coming from somebody on the right, but I think people on the left fall into this same rather effective talking point, which is that regardless of what I say or, or, or who it affects or how it affects people, you should not be willing to, you know, not have me on your platform anymore or whatever it is, because when you do that, you are you are you know being manipulated by the woke mob and and now you're you know you're marginalizing me essentially right <laughs> and 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 now oh. i can't i i don't want to be associated with you because you you know you're picking on me with your wokeness <laughs> right oh 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 uh, and Doug Doug Pine Creek if you're listening i'll send you i'll send you a studio shot of me yeah, you'll like it <laughs> because most people don't really, you know, maybe, maybe you don't have the balls. Like, you go come on my channel, call me ugly. Yeah, yeah, Fucker. um, that... by the way, by the way, shave your mustache, don't like it, <laughs> don't like it, gross, gross, just the it makes me feel icky, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I, I appreciate Derek for resisting this. And I think a lot of us struggle with this, especially around. Pol um, first off, I want to and I should have mentioned this earlier, but for those who don't know, I, I think there's a problem with a lot of these cultural issues where. And, and, and Derek is seeing this wisely that over the arc of history, we saw these issues as political. We saw women's voting rights and segregation. We, we saw these as political issues, but now when we look back in the arc of history, we see that, whoa, that was not politics. That was about people's rights. That was about human rights. That was about, you know, um, 
I hear the same thing being discussed around Donald Trump now. Like, wait, wait, wait where you're at on this Trump and justice thing is it's no longer about presidential politics. This is about history of how we ad ad address fascism, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I, it bothers me that right wingers, Jordan Petersons, content creators, a lot of these bigots are allowed to do their bigotry under the guise of quote unquote controversial political opinions. And what Derek is resisting is a couple of things simultaneously, in addition to the threats. He's resisting this notion that this is just political opinions and that we should we should we should frame this as a disagreement about political perspectives. He's resisting that and saying, no, this is this is way, way bigger than that. And then he's also resisting this secondary narrative of because this is political discourse, you have to accept, you know, these people regardless of their opinions. Um, and I don't see enough of this. And this is really hard when it comes to politics. It's really hard when it comes to religion. Like, think about how many people in our family our family and friend circles are harboring anti-LGBT uh, Q, you know, prejudices themselves, but we sort of let them off the hook because it's, uh, well, it's, it's their problematic right winger or, you know, it's, it's part of their religious narrative and, you know, we don't, we don't want to push too hard against their religious narrative, right? And we're not putting our foot down and saying, fuck that, y you know, this is about human rights, motherfucker. Um, Jay. Yeah, go ahead, Steph. I just want to say, you want to, here, ugly. Listen to the rest of what Derek says. Oh, and all right, here we go. There the it rest, is. There we've been setting it up. Here, ugly. We've been setting it up. Listen to, what, listen to what Price had to say. All right, here we here we go. About Review videos and oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. About someone we both love. Oh, all right, all right. Here we here we go. The resurrection course. It is no longer any concern of mine, and all because this is where it gets really bad, and all because. You allowed that Bowen coward, Joshua mm. Bowen, that Bowen coward, henpecked by his lunatic concubine, to okay. make you believe Whoa. he speaks for some swelling horde of professional academics. Whoa. Whoa. I'd call that ugly. I'd call that Back very beyond ugly. Whoa. First off, not true. It is it is oh, it is not true, not true that but, that but Josh Bowen thing. called hey, <laughs> hey, it's all the woman's fault. It's all the ugly woman's fault. Yeah. The ugly woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's matter. crazy. Straight doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, it was a it was a, well a, a whole, might as well throw the whole bucket of misogyny right over uh, the yeah i was just gonna of, say of, it's a... of, of derek's head of of josh's head of megan's head just throw the entire bucket out there go ahead and show us how big an ugly asshole you Holy actually are shit jesus christ man yeah i mean that that was crazy um you, you know i hope you guys have heard enough to understand that first off derek did not take his stance because he simply had a conversation with Josh Bowen who convinced him that the woke mob was coming for Dr. Price. But on top Bree, of that, Bree's just... In the chat, Bree's in the chat going, Megan's cool with it. She added it to her credentials. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> ugly woman. Hey, there we go. Con ugly concubine. I'd put, you know, if somebody said that to me, I'd put that as my... It, it's like uh, Shannon Q changes her uh, Twitter handle Whenever but that that comment ridiculously outrageous, and so yeah, but Megan should do the same. That pen hecked concubine thing. I, 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 we're sorry. Concubine. We're gonna have to. Concubine. We're gonna. This is Keep this going. is a this is a wait. You gotta you gotta you gotta hear exactly how ugly this motherfucker Culture is. Culture fascist. Well, loyalty admitting that my views were nobody's business and did not taint my scholarly work. You now said you disagreed with my bad ideas and was horrified to learn via the Pine Creek interview that they were intolerably worse yet. Yep. Thus, you said you decided to dump me. The truth is that you were cowardly submitting to the threats of the cancel culture fascist. Whoa. Well, loyalty has a high cost and so does disloyalty. Ooh. By publicly slandering me and betraying me, you have crossed the line. 
you have made it impossible to continue either a professional professional or personal relationship you between can't us. Fire me. I Do what quit. you will with the interview videos and the resurrection course. It is no longer any concern of mine. And all because this is where it gets really bad. And all because you allowed that Bowen coward, Joshua Bowen, that Bowen coward, henpecked by his lunatic concubine, mm. to make you believe Ooh. he speaks for some swelling horde of professional academics. And y'all, look. We've been talking a lot about trans issues lately. And of course, there are issues of racism here. But misogyny is at the core of these ideologies. And I do feel like the sort of weak of the Francesca Strava Capullo uh, David Paul, David Falk controversy. We had some very important conversations in this community about misogyny, but we need to keep misogyny at the forefront of our minds. Uh, you know, Roe v. Wade, a number of these other um, decisions that are happening legally and politically. Uh, I, I just, I just think that that comment shows that there's there's still deep deep misogyny at the core of this ideology in addition to all of the other problematic things right and, and like stephanie highlighted with the queer community we are rolling back rights people already have stephanie also likes to say they'll come for you next so let's not pretend that even though a lot of these people are turfs, that women are, uh, are in a safe position with these people, right? They, 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 they hate everybody. That's what, that's all I want to remind you. They fucking hate literally everybody. <laughs> it's just awful. Your move was grossly ill considered, and as far as I'm concerned, irreparable. I will thank you not to contact me again, Robert M. Price. Wow, what a pretty nice guy he is towards Dr. Joshua Bowen and and his wife Megan because wow. they simply wanted him to go on record apologizing Apologize. and correcting the bullshit that he said. And yes, I had sided by this time. The analogy I'll give as we're wrapping up because there's so much here. The analogy I'd give is imagine a girlfriend that is cheating or being dishonest. You love her, you care for her, you have emotions you've built and you care about, about her, but you have other friends you also have feelings and you're really close to and they say, hey man, she's being dishonest with you. She's not being good for you. She's not good for you. She's lying to you. She's this, she's that. This is not good. You're better than that. Don't stay there. And you get defensive. This is how I was with Bob at first. Defensive, compartmentalize and stop. Let me be. This is my relationship. Quit it. Get off my back. But your girlfriend keeps on saying things or doing things that are not right. And if you're thinking about that and you're arguing with your friends, which are causing you emotional turmoil, you realize that at some point she says something in the relationship, something gives. And you then realize, oh my gosh, she really isn't good for me. And this is not good. And she thinks you betrayed her. Right. That is kind of what's going on here with Bob. And Bob does not even realize that I have ethically been on the side of saying what he said was wrong, which is why I've asked him to say he's sorry. But Bob gets the slightest sniff of anything progressive, a hint of something more liberal, something that is actually trying to break down these horrific old boomer type ideas, then he gets really like stiff armed and his pride steps in the way and his Fox News rhetoric comes out and he's super defensive. This is what happens. He has completely rejected um, listening to anyone else, even when Jacob Berman was telling him that Ralph Ellis is no good. I dropped all my interviews with Ralph Ellis. This guy is a no good guy. I'm telling you, not only conspiratorial, but this guy has said nutty shit pertaining to all sorts of issues, vaccine, global warming, women, flying in aircrafts, black people. He's said a lot of stuff in the past. In fact, I think Jacob Berman's planning on putting out a video at some point about this. Listen, it was so bad that Jacob Berman 
me and James Stevens Valiant had a fallout for a while arguing on the phone. Me and Valiant did. And Berman, we had arguments. We were opposed to each other because I dropped Robert and Price. A year later, he's dropping Robert and Price. Everybody's dropping him. What's going on? Mm -hmm. And I literally would talk. I was trying to express, yes, there was pressure. Yes, the friends of the girlfriend analogy were pressuring. I had academics saying, I'm not coming on there if you keep him. I had pressure, sure. But the people who sided with Bob are the only ones who are acting like, that's the reason I made the decision. No. If someone is going to point out this problem, I could have stuck with my guns, but that really wasn't me. Bob forced me into a predicament where I was not willing to continue ethically on my own grounds. And it was such a revelation when he went on Pine Creek show for me. It was such a revelation that this was not who I am. Now, why am I making this video? Jacob Berman had to boot him. I know that Neil doesn't want to do with him. And he tried to bring him back to have him apologize and all of that. And he comes on to apologize, supposedly. He doesn't even know what he's apologizing for. He doesn't even think he did anything wrong. Till this day, Bob thinks he's completely innocent of anything he's ever said or done in, in regards to any of this. Well, I dropped him and I'm no, not interested. But the dynamics are way more complicated and I've never done a video expressing these dynamics. This is why I did what I did. Those who throw around, oh, your peer pressure, woke mob, uh, cancel culture, this, that, like – you might as well scream cancel culture to people who fire employees because of something they've done wrong or said wrong at an, a place of employment. Because I hired Bob. I paid Bob for all of those interviews. He was worth his wage, and I paid him his wages for everything. And add to it, you know, the, the ones who want to act like, uh, well, you just, you, just, uh, you just pressured to the bullying from those who are around you. No. I stood up to them. In fact, Dr. Josh, I fought him on this. Uh, Heathen Queen, others who tagged me on this, Chrissy Hansen, I fought all of them for a long time. It was finally when I realized that I actually sided with the voices I was fighting against over against the guy I was trying to defend that I realized what the hell is going on. And it wasn't good enough for me to just drop him and move on. It was good enough for me to finally take a stand and say why I thought this was wrong. And I want to be on the side of history that helps change so our children's children don't view others that think differently than us or act differently than us differently. While he thought January 6th was the good guys and wanted civil war over it, thinking that the nation was literally taken over, he still thinks the elections were stolen. He still probably thinks the vaccines are are uh, some conspiracy and are, yeah. are some like. And y'all, literally Doug is on the same shit. I literally mm -hmm. saw Doug on a stream with Sample Pack, a whole bunch of people talking about how January 6th wasn't that bad. They really wouldn't have done anything. Uh, they weren't serious about hanging Mike Pence. He um, it, you said it wasn't that big of a deal. Literally, that was his thing. He, he said, guys, I want to do a thought experiment. I'm going to do a thought experiment. Just check this out. Check this out. Here, here, just hear me out. Hear me out. January 6th was not that big of a deal. What do you think? What do you think? He literally did a stream where he made everybody go, he had a whole bunch of people saying he made everybody go one by one and say that the vaccine can kill you. The vaccine can kill you guys, right? All right, you say the vaccine kill you. All right, you say the vaccine can kill you. You say the vaccine. Like, talk about putting words in people's, like literally demanding everybody on his panel say the vaccine can kill you. Can all kill of you. the racist shit he said, all the transphobic shit he said. And again, people act like, we're bullies for taking a stand against it. Mm. Uh, why you want to support platform, be friends with, hang around, play cards with, dunk on or whatever. Uh, uh, like, uh, why? Why? I, there's just no reason. Um, but, yeah, I just, it, it, we still apparently have a lot of people in our community who don't get it. And it's kind of sad. Um, but yeah, let me, let, let's uh, finish this up. Hidden agenda. I've got, I've got scientists I talked to today on Myth Vision Now who literally know and work on vaccinations and stuff and will tell you, no, this is not a, a hoax. 
there were really working on the betterment of society and helping with these vaccines scientifically with COVID-19, which is a real thing. It's not a, a political agenda. Was it coupled with politics in some way? Sure. But it is not a hoax. It is not this secret thing. And there's so much more here, but this video had to be done. I know it's long, but I needed to express myself so you understood the full story. Now, if you're one of the people at the end of the day who still sides with Bob, who still wants to come up with the ridiculous nonsense that this Ed Koch guy, the Edward the Confessor guy, and others who act like this is something that I did was wrong, go for it. Feel free to. I have no problem with you having your own thoughts about that, but I can tell you what, no more light will be brought to it with this channel on Myth Vision. I really needed to express this and I hope that this helped somebody who's also in a tough situation trying to figure it out. And uh, there you have it. This is goodbye. Yeah. Uh, man, I'm proud of Derek. Uh, that's what growth oh, yeah. looks like. You know, people come to your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And you get twisted up when you're trying to convert them. And, um, man... I think I, I don't think Derek owed us this type of clarity about the situation, but I hope people appreciate the clarity that he's nevertheless volunteered. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead, Steph. I, I can't, can't hear understand. you. I don't. I think they're just doing their own thing. Oh, maybe. You're um yeah. so I, go yeah, ahead james yeah we can't we can't we can't oversell how important the the whole vaccine and and pandemic issues were were and, and still are right like especially yeah. when the news was showing large refrigerated trailers like tractor truck trailers like 18 wheeler trailers um that were ho holding all kinds of dead bodies and that they were digging mass graves in new york to find a place to put all the bodies because we didn't yet have all the vir virology work done on it yet. And we weren't sure how tile contagious those bodies might have been. And we had no, we didn't, we didn't have the, the resources to be able to process that many bodies into, right. in, into funeral homes that people couldn't even get to anyways because they couldn't mass gather inside. Right. We had nurses and doctors committing the S word, I don't know. Yeah. We're not monetized anyways, but I'm just going to say sure. the S word. And that we're appealing and that we're crying and begging and pleading with the general public to please start taking this seriously because they are in the trenches and they are being absolutely overwhelmed. We have images, live video footage in major hospitals where doctors and nurses in their scrubs were just laying down in the hallways foot head to foot head to foot head to foot because there was no place for them to go to lay down to even catch their breath or to take a nap they couldn't go home and wait for tomorrow's shift because they couldn't go home because they were all mm. needed there and we had all yes. kinds of people who needed emergency services for reasons that weren't covid but couldn't get the care they needed mm. because the emergency rooms and the inpatient rooms were already overstocked with covid patients right. and they just didn't have anywhere to put them any anybody to treat them and people whose lives could have been saved died instead mm. because the medical system was being overwhelmed and that didn't just go on for weeks it went on for for well over a year before things started to at least least not be quite that horrific but we're still horrific we still had people saying i can't take this anymore and leaving their careers as doctors and nurses we still had people going on permanent disability after a lifetime of service in, the, in those fields we still had people opting out as as it were we still had people that were completely overwhelmed and had PTSD from the whole thing. We still have all kinds of the death toll still hasn't been properly counted. If you count all the people that died as a result of not being able to get the care they needed mm -hmm. because the, the medical systems were overwhelmed and not just in our country, but across the world. And anybody that was promoting misinformation about the pandemic in order to politically weaponize it should be held criminally responsible, in my opinion, the same as somebody caught making bioweapons in their basement. It is the same mm -hmm. goddamn thing. And I'm sorry, but you have to be held accountable. It's one thing to be misinformed and just casually have a misinformed opinion. It is another thing to dive deep into the issues 
ignore the facts and actually build a platform on weaponizing misinformation. That's a completely different kind of game. And there should be no allowance for that at all. And then in the meantime, we have the churches, right? The churches were bioweaponizing bio themselves on purpose. You know, the blood of Jesus protects me. I won't get sick. And then what happened? They got sick anyways. And the bigger issue was you guys didn't care about all the people in your community that you were going to spread this deadly pandemic to. You didn't care about how many men, women, and children mm. and babies were going to suffer horribly, many of them dying, because you were so selfish that all you cared about was whether or not blood magic ritual was going to protect you. You. Mm -hmm. not, it, hell with everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. And these same damn people are talking about patriotism and and uh, family values. And I'm like, your family values is to kill everybody. How it was, is that a family value? It was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. I, I will never forgive the church, forget or forgive the church for the COVID response. It was a huge part of becoming a you know, radical anti-theist for me was just, you know, you, you guys are enemies of humanity and these are crimes mm -hmm. against humanity. Um, but yeah, the, these people absolutely participated in that. You know, yeah, even the churches, even the churches that acknowledged some restrictions, I noticed that they didn't go on any national platform and, and, and call out the churches that were refusing. I noticed that right. they didn't. Right. They didn't want it. They didn't want the public to see the deep divisions that have ha happened within Christianity, and so they right. stayed silent. And they were the and first people to up. get rid of the mask and mm. go to indoor gatherings. They they cared far more about that than they did the the human cost. Um, yep. uh, I want to get Steph in here because now she's typing. Go ahead, Steph. <laughs> yeah, I'm just responding to this idiot. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what I don't know what to say. I, I, Bob is going on and on about being canceled and this, that, and the other thing. And Derek is like, no, I, you know, no, I'm not. I'm canceling you for my show. Right. It's not the right. first show or first star that has been, you know, asked to say, we don't know what we'll do without you, but we're guess we're just going to have to find out. You know, yes. right. I, I mean, like a, it's, it's like Adidas it's, and Conway it's, it's, or Kanye. It's the whole. It's just. It's it's the whole. Uh, you know, Bob to this day, it's like, is he canceled? No, he's got. He's on. He's he's on with Doug. He's on with who? He's on with whoever. He's on whoever with he wants, we, yeah. wherever he wants to. Wherever he wants to go, whoever will have him. That mm -hmm. one of those people that won't have him on anymore happens to be Derek. Uh, mm -hmm. And other people that don't want to have anything to do with them. Well, it's that it's it's uh, Josh Bowen's concubine. I, you know, you know it, it's it's like, dude, get over yourself. You're 68 years old. You've had a career. You've done this. You've done that. You've said some stupid shit. People don't like the stupid shit you spout. That's okay. Right. Keep spouting your stupid shit. Stay on Twitter. Yeah. Go on Facebook. Go wherever you can. Right. You yeah. know, it's not like it's not like you don't have the same kind of fucking access to it to a fucking computer screen that I do, that Jay does. Right. That 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 any of us have. It's like, come on, get over yourself. People don't want people don't want to listen to a bunch of tripe about the virtuous of. Uh, the virtuous uh, crowd, the virtuous patriots of January 6th. Most people yeah, was... don't really care for that crap, but you seem to think that it's really important that a great injustice was done to Donald J. Trump in losing the election, that he honestly lost, that he lost in every, in every single court that, he, that, that the issue was tried in. Loss, 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 loss. It's a vast left-wing conspiracy, and I need to tell it to the world, and I need to be able to tell it to the world on Myth Vision, but I can't because I've been canceled. Go right. fuck yourself, <laughs> mate. Go yeah. fuck yourself. Yeah. Get yourself a fucking computer. Sit your monkey ass down in front of the fucking computer with the camera, with the microphone. See the microphone, Bob? You can get one of these, and you right. can say whatever the fuck you want for as much time as you like, but you can put up yourself a GoFundMe, you can put yourself up a Patreon, and you can spout your garbage to the entire fucking world, and nobody, 
cares? Yeah, uh, yeah. stupid it's energy just brought that I don't want to invite you. Yeah. I mean, I would love to invite you to have a good conversation. I actually did right. in in chat when you were when you were on uh, on uh, on with you channel. guys, right? Well, yeah, Neil's on, channel. on Neil's channel, yeah. right? I actually did in chat. It's like, hey, you want to talk to? You know, you seem to think that this whole thing that you seem to be confused about the, the whole trans issue, you seem to be confused about maybe because you seem to think of it as something brand new. Well, maybe you'd like to talk to somebody a year older than you about the, the struggles that she went through for her 69 years of life. Maybe we could, maybe that would be something educational, but I don't think he wants to listen to any of it. And I'm even more convinced after listening to Derek's uh, oh, explanation yeah. oh, of exactly yeah. what happened. Oh, yeah. But he's in he's not reachable on this level. The point is that the and and I don't think give, you know given the performance of uh people in chat who've who've been uh who are enthusiasts of Bob Price, I think they're just as close minded. I don't know yes maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But listen, you know, there are other sides. I mean it's the it's our we're not, there are things that are correct and there are things that are incorrect. There are things, there are, there are experiences that you might not have. To the extent that you want to close off your, uh, your mind, your ears, your eyes to uh, learning from new experiences, new interactions with different sets of people, to that extent, you know, you put yourself in that, you put yourself in that hermetically sealed, uh, uh coffin right and and it's if the only comfort you get is within those within those comfy little walls uh and the only satisfaction you get is to whenever that comfort is disturbed you go into other venues where other people where other people are talking and trying to have substantive conversations about progress about human rights about dignity, about uh, about people's liberties and freedoms, uh, and how we can live together and get along as human beings without talk of extermination, without talk of canceling, without talk of all of this other stuff. To the extent that you do that, and whenever you come out of it, your first in inclination is to run to the state legislature and 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 uh, make sure that the laws against uh, the laws that that overly impact minorities, uh, uh, underserved populations, um, people at great risk. Your first inclination is to go after those people and make their already tenuous lives an even bigger living hell than hey. I'm sorry for you. Yeah, you got some, I'm some really soul fucking to sorry do. for you. Yeah, yeah, I I agree, Steph. I I I think that's a fantastically valid point. Um, at the end of the day, these people I I think are enemies of humanity. And what what's crazy is that he brings them out. You know, there are people that have been in the chat, this stream, people that leave comments on these streams that we never hear from, other than when there's the opportunity to do bootlicking for bigots. And it, it says a lot that, to me, this is something that motivates them. You know, they really want to defend the rights of these people to be bigots. And, 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 and you know, part of what I think you'll see, uh, even if you look at, Tux's response to some of the shit with Pine Creek. It's constantly the same rhetoric. Oh, you know, you guys should have a, a marriage mentality, not a divorce mentality. In other words, it's on us, the people being marginalized, to want to stay together with the people who are marginalizing us. When we start to call them out, when we start to say, hey, if you're down with them, you can't be down with us. Oh, it's us who's being tribalistic and divisive. But well, how many times do you think these people have gone over to Doug and said, hey, maybe don't throw black people under the bus at critical moments that are affecting the black community? Hey, maybe don't throw trans people under the bus when there's goddamn near 100 laws 
being tra passed against trans people right now. You'll never go to them and tell them to do right by us, but it's always coming to us. Let's stay together for the kids. What fucking kids? We ain't got shit in cooperation with these people. Um, and then, and then, and then it's well. Uh, I'll fight for you guys' rights, but I'll fight for their right to say what they want to say. What? To act as though you don't recognize placating their bigotry as civil discourse and then treating the rest of us like we don't understand the fucking First Amendment. Like, oh, you've got to fight for their right to say hateful shit. Sorry, you're just dog whistling to the right wingers. You're, you're just, you're just right wing dog whistling and act like you're fucking teaching progressive people something. Yeah, I, I need white guys to tell me about how don't call out racism because uh, we should fight for everybody's rights to say what they need to say. Nigga, get a fucking clue. Like, it's, 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 it's insulting, actually, to be, to be treated that way. And then for people to moralize it like, like, like they've got the moral high ground by giving these people... Uh, space to, to spew their fucking nonsense. It's very frustrating. But we see the same, we see this, the rhetoric the same, it's the same way every time. Oh, I'll fight for you guys and fight for them too. As if their rights have need, ever needed to be fought for. Well, you know, that's just the point. I, I mean, I have, I, I'm, as I said, I'm happy to, I'm, I'm really, look, honestly, happy to talk to anybody about the, these issues. But if, it's a, if, if when the conversation starts out, the end of the conversation is already apparent that I am here to uh, have a, uh, you know, show my willingness to uh, engage in a conversation with someone I regard as subhuman. That's not really a conversation that I feel all that comfortable in reckoning with because i don't think that bob price is anything less than a human being i don't want to take away his freedom to do whatever he wants and he can do a lot more perhaps than i can uh you know he has he has a lot of a, a, a following he has a reputation he's got you know he could he could easily get on the right wing gravy train and 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 make coin with it lots and lots of people have done that uh and I, i'm how how am i going to stop that but that doesn't mean that i have to keep my mouth shut and say oh, you, know, <laughs> and, and, you know that i have to that i have to sit yeah. here and say and say right. you know what he's got some shitty ass ideas that right. i think he's i I think yeah. it's misinformed, and all he's going to do is scream back, "No, I'm not. I'm right. right. You're wrong." And and uh, you know, and if you're if you're religious, you're going to hell. You know that. Kind and of while crap. you're, and but while he doesn't you're... even have that excuse. Yes, and while you're going to rail about your constitutional rights, don't forget to rail about the right to peacefully assemble, which means my right to get together with who I can peacefully assemble with and exclude those I cannot. <laughs> Yeah. Get over yeah, and, it. And, oh, and by the way, by the way, by the way, peacefully is kind of a key word. You know? yeah. When right. you when you show up yes. at the Capitol building and erect a gallows, and you have all of your peaceably assembling people screaming out, "Hang the Vice President of the United States and the Speaker of the House too!" On said gallows, that yeah. doesn't yeah. seem very peaceable. Yeah, they were breaking windows to get in, and they had like special like twist ties and handcuffs and all kinds of stuff. And then when they finally tried to breach the barrier, like they were beating um, guards and cops up with like fire extinguishers and stuff. Like that ain't peaceful. Yeah, that's not. But Even that's... Mike Pence knew. Mike Pence knew they were coming to kill him. Right? Who's yeah. gonna Who's gonna Who's gonna accuse Mike Pence of being part of the woke mob or? A libtard, like come on! <laughs> as, as conservative well, as you can get, all of those people, all of those people, the people that were calling for him to be hung, were call, were basically saying he's gone over to the libtard. Yeah, he's gone over. He's gone over to the. And here we are, owning yeah. the libs by you know 
taking a dump in the in the in the Capitol Rotunda. Woohoo! Look at me! I just took a shit in the lap of of Charles Sumter. Ah, look at me! Right. You know, yeah. I mean, so, come on, people. Right. These are the same people that say when they've built a business that their business isn't your business. You have no right to the money they make or how they make their money. You have no right to their property. You have no right to their intellectual property. If it's theirs, it's theirs. You can go get vent. But they won't extend the same courtesy to Derek. Now his platform, his space, his time, his energy, his passion, his investments, his money, mm-hmm. his 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 livelihood is everything. Is is something that that Bob Price has full and eternal access to just because he's Bob Price. I mean, Derek in that stream literally said he went to Bob's house with one of Bob's pals and produced an episode that he right. didn't do it for Myth Vision. Right. He produced an episode for said pal of Bob Price to air on his channel using Derek's expertise to produ- in production right that went that, that went all through this the the, the January 6th was a, a gathering of patriots that the, that the election was a fraud that uh, blah 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 all these all, all these ridiculous talking right. points you know for all I know I didn't watch the stream but you right. know maybe maybe there were children being eaten by democrat ex- adrenochrome right. was right. being extracted from them in the basement of a pizza parlor with no basement right you know it, it's it, it's like you can do this if you want nobody's stopping you i'm not stopping you i'm not saying you can't do it i'm just saying if you do do it don't be surprised that people say that's a bunch of horseshit, mate you know give me sure. a break all right Bree. Brie is just navigating gather like a pro, just came in, got right out. Nice. Brie, I was about to send you a follower request. Brie don't need no stinking follower request to get uh-huh. to the stage. Brie, Brie, Brie can sniff out the stage like like all true stars can. Uh, welcome, Brie. Good to have you here. Hey. Hello. Uh, thank how, you for... How long have you been here listening, Brie, so far? Uh, well, I was in, I was in the YouTube uh chat yeah i chat uh, for like i've been in there for about an hour and a half or so just listen awesome. i listened to the so i i listened to this earlier I yeah you saw their stream last, okay great great yeah, yeah. so I, i'm all caught up on that i've actually been talking to uh, both megan and josh about it privately um they hadn't seen it yet so um they're they, they're megan got a kick out of it i just uh she she, she thought it was funny the the concubine uh yeah, that was sure. a bit much, right? Like that was He's, uh, weird. Well, weird. price is a bit much, right? I mean, I'm not here to. I mean, as far as Derek goes, uh, price was one of the reasons I kind of stayed away from there because I knew he had. Uh, and it wasn't because it was actually because of the racist stuff. It wasn't that I had heard about him. It wasn't because of the uh, the trans stuff. That was like you're saying. Price me. is one of the reasons you stayed. You weren't. As I didn't watch MythVision. Of a yeah. MythVision supporter. Okay, I wanna yeah. I wanna pause there for a second because I think that's an important point that I don't think people in privileged position understand, and it's only something I've recently been able to vocalize myself. I've I've made the mistake. I've talked. I've done these streams, and I've said this community isn't supporting so and so as much anymore, or I'm not supporting so and so. I don't want to watch so and so. And a lot of people take that as, again, you're part of the woke mob, you're trying to cancel so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what people don't understand is it robs you of your peace. What you're saying is I'm aware of this issue, and when I see this channel, this platform, these people or whatever, I can't help the fact that it triggers the emotions associated with this with this issue and it makes it an uncomfortable viewing experience for me and I, I just want people to understand that because that has to happen first in other words watching has to hurt before someone decides i'm not going to watch somebody right now and i don't think people get that and they don't realize it's not people bullying us. It's people really trying to get through to you to say, man, these issues are real to me. Please pay attention. 
Sorry. <laughs> you, you know, I, I get you. You look at the person different once you once you find out some things about them. You could have been following an individual for months and then find out some uh, some horrid stuff about them or that they have these uh, these abhorrent positions and suddenly it, it, it puts them in a different light and you just don't want to you don't want to be around them anymore you don't want to like you don't want to uh, consume whatever they're putting out once you realize where it's coming from in this position of mostly it's it, mostly it's position of ignorance but some right. people like stephanie was saying he doesn't want to he doesn't want to be corrected on it it'll, it'll never be wrong to mm to to him it'll, there's and there's so many people that it'll, it'll just never be wrong to but there's not the, the they're, they're, are they worse than the people who know that that they're wrong but still continue to push the narrative anyway i don't know it's that, sure, uh, sure. who's worse yeah <laughs> the ones that are grifting or the ones who fell for the graft yeah i i just want to also say because i appreciate that i'm struggling with that i'm struggling with that right now with the whole anna experience situation i'm a i'm a, mm -hmm. I'm, a I'm a i'm a big tyt fan a lot of people aren't um but we don't have a lot of networks that produce that kind of content and i love some of their hosts right some of the people that they've really given a platform to who i think do have fantastically progressive voices and a lot of representation on their network, right? But yeah, did I'm you hear what Sam Cedar said about it? I mean, you want to talk about a, a, a left wing voice uh, addressing this? Because uh, I haven't heard, mostly I've seen like that's mostly what I've seen actually. I've seen uh, like Vosh and uh, Xander Hall and uh, Big uh, Demon Mama and all these people addressing what, what Anna tweeted I get where she's coming from with like nobody wants to be classified by by that and I don't think but I think that the the, the misunderstanding is that that's no one's uh wanting to use that in like common language right it's not right in legislation right. when we're when we're passing vote when we're voting on uh on laws for reproductive rights then yeah that's important to talk about this demographic that has this certain aspect of the reproductive process as opposed to the to the other aspects of the reproductive process right yeah absolutely. but uh that's a clinic on in a clinical level or a, a, it, when we're talking about legislation i think it's the only places where that would even that language would even come up so i don't know where anna's coming from with that honestly but you know i i don't have a uterus and i never will so um that sucks for me, I guess. Sure. Um, I guess for me, I was just I was just also trying to highlight the, the idea that for, for me, like now there's a tension in the fact that I'm so habituated to watching their stuff, but now there's an uneasiness and I and I find myself not wanting to. And I and as a fan, I'm literally find myself it, it, it almost feels like praying with this sincere hope of like please address this because I want to support you, but I'm, I have this uncomfortable feeling and I'd really like you to address it so that I, so that I, so that, so that we can bring some resolution to this. Right. And, and, right. and, and I, and I, and I, and again, the two things I want to impress upon our audience. One is these feelings are real and, and you shouldn't ask people to dehumanize themselves by ignoring their response to people who have participated in things that are insensitive. And number two, it makes a difference when you acknowledge these things. I would hope that one of the results of Derek talking about these things is now people who he is trying to be an ally of who would want to watch him can now go, oh shit, now I know where Derek stands again. And I feel a little bit easier watching Myth Vision and enjoying what he has to offer because now I know where he stands on this, and I didn't before. And I, and so it makes yeah. a difference, right? And and we should yeah. do that more. Derek did what I want Anna to do. Hundred percent. Yes, that's what I was trying to say. Please. please. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Steph. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to go back to the old standard and, and I must make two honest confessions to you, my Christian and Jewish brothers. First, I must confess that over the past few years, I've been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I've almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his, tribes, in his stride towards freedom is not the white citizens counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate, who is more devoted to order than to justice 
who prefers a negative piece, which is the absence of tension, to a positive piece, mm. which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mm. mythical concept of time, and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. And this is the key, shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. Mm. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's where, that's where it falls down with the people that are sort of saying, oh, well, just, you know, bygones be bygones and all of this other stuff. No, it's, it, it's, it's, you need to see the, you need to see, you need to be woke. Okay. I just made, <laughs> I do. just made two people in the fucking chat go, yes, she said woke. Yes. He's a libtard. Yeah, does that make you happier? Yeah, I'm fucking woke. I have ears I'm fucking woke as hell. You need to stay woke. I am fucking woke as hell. And the reason, the reason I'm woke as hell is because I see injustice. Mm. And I see people suffering, and I don't want them to suffer. That's right. And, and I do not understand why it is so important, that it, why, it is, why it is such an injustice. I, I, you know, I would say that the injustice be, been, that, uh, that Bob Price perceives to have been done to him is insignificant compared to the injustice that was done in the streets of Milwaukee or the injustices that are being perpetrated in the legislatures of Tennessee, of Alabama, of Florida, 100%, of Georgia, 100%. Of, of states Get across em. this country. Where, Oklahoma. Where Get states, Oklahoma. Where states, where states are literally passing laws to ban and almost burn books. Yes. Yes. Uh, Empty 90, bookshelves. 90 years ago, 90 years ago in Berlin, 90 years, this May 6th through the 10th, the SA went to the Institute for Sexual Research in Berlin, broke in, emptied the library of every single book, dragged them out into the streets, those photographs that you saw, the book burnings in Germany, that's where they started. 90 years ago this May. Because you could convince people to, you could convince people you to start there. That's where it starts. Where it friggin' starts. Because you could convince people that the purity of the German race depends on making sure that there are no queers among us. Mm. They burned the books. They kept the records and arrested the people. That's where this is headed. Yeah, but there was research yeah. that was lost in there. We, there was yeah. decades, and th that was the leading yeah. research f place in the world for yeah. th that that field mm. of uh, uh, in it right. all gone, all that uh, set back at least thirty years. Wow. But it's be but because yeah, it's, because it's because it's easy. It's easier to do that. Uh, it it a lot of people are uncomfortable with discussing sexuality and stuff like that. So it's, it's easy to, 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 uh, and, and this word came out of Doug's mouth. It, it raises my level of disgust. I mean, Matt Wall, uh, uh, I don't know, Icky. not Matt Walls, I don't know, whatever. Uh, Doug, Pine Creek Doug said yes. that? Yes. So the Pine it Creek raises, Doug it raises, all... it raises my disgust. It raises my level of disgust. Well, there's that, that's, that's that's your lizard brain talking, mate. And this is why these issues are so appealing to the right wing, because all you need to do to promote hate is to inspire hate and direct it. And then so nothing else matters. Forrest uh, Valkai uh, was, I just watched a short of his this morning that talked about, you're talking about the, the lizard brain that caused him the disgust. Yeah, he's talking about the same part of your brain that causes you to have that reaction to 
to, to rotten food or whatever, but you condition your brain to associate. That's why, uh, you know, you can be raised to be disgusted by homosexuality. And if you're a homosexual in that situation, then you're disgusted by yourself. Mm-hmm. That, that's the root cause a lot of a lot of this this issue when you're raised to hate trans people and you and you're and you're trans and deep down inside you hate yourself or think there's something wrong with you or think mm. you're an abomination that and, and it's encouraged the culture that you're in and it will encourage that and while well, in these certain red states in these areas uh where there aren't a lot of trans people uh i'm in the, the city i'm in Sixty thousand people is the biggest city in 500 miles in any direction and uh it is there are i'm the only trans person i know mm. <laughs> you know that's yeah. that's the world i live in and uh i grew up just being put on the spot with uh with the trans people were gross and being trans was gross mm. being queer was gross being gay was gross and that made it really hard to live with myself. You know, I have a, a, a lot of struggles that just root from, from being that inside and not and, and, and feeling like I had to hide it. Mm. You do that for, well, just, for 20 you know, years. A, and Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, yes, we, we, we share. Yeah, me and, me and Stephanie were the, I, same age, were the same age when we started our transition, right? Yeah, mm. but I'm 25 years on. You'll, you'll get there. Yeah. all good. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, I'm right uh, behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad. I'm glad. You know, but, but this goes to the, this goes to the, um, what I was saying right at the beginning of the stream, that uh, while Price is an atheist, uh, Pine Creek's an atheist, but the culture is suffused. Western culture is suffused with the, uh, I don't know what, I can't remember the word I use, but the, the cultural leavings of Christianity are these attitudes towards the shamefulness of sex. I mean, the Genesis 2 is all about that, right? You know, you, you how come how come I'm seen with clothes, says Yahweh? Well, I, I saw I was naked and put them on. I mean, it's gross. You know, yeah. It's, you know, it's shameful. Well, how did you know that was shameful? Huh? I'll bet you ate from that fucking tree. Huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> it's a lazy ass out of here. No, 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 no soup for you. Get get gone. Hey, you know, no soup state. for you. Hey. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't turn around, by the way, because you know we've got the seraphim there going like this. Yeah. Hey, stay the fuck out of Eden. But that's the cultural heritage that that we come from, and and the, uh, there's a huge soup song of of guilt over sex, guilt over, uh, guilt over reproduction, guilt over, uh, guilt over a whole bunch of stuff, and that's a pretty huge cloud to cast over a. a, a fairly important part of a human's life uh and and it's not one that that uh it's not one that's easily escaped as is proven by dr robert m price and uh and yeah yep uh james were you gonna say something um yeah i, I didn't get a chance to see, hear earlier what what um stupid or energy said I missed it. Like you were gonna tell us, and then we started. Oh, oh she said I that. I love stupid horror She energy. said that um, Bob Price is so anti-socialism, but he, but then he he relies on like a GoFundMe. Yeah. All right, gang. Look, we've been out here for like three hours. We need to shoot this thing in the head to keep it, so I can pretend it's watchable. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> right. um, but yeah, I wanted to uh, make sure that uh, everybody has a chance to uh, say say their piece. So I'll let uh, Bree go, then Steph, and then uh, James and I can can wrap this up. Okay, I'm glad that uh, that Derek did this um, again. I like I like I was just saying. I wish Anna Kasparian would would. Take yes, this approach, yes. or uh, that, well said. that 
the rest of the Young Turks would take this approach as well to this uh, to to this issue that they're dealing with right now. The same kind of uh, of uh, approach to the conflict and addressing it publicly. Uh, that's what needs to happen every time this comes up. We need to hold people accountable for what they say and do. Right now, there is a uh, congresswoman in Kansas that's been filibustering for weeks uh, against these uh, anti-trans bills. Uh, she's the only one in the country that did it, and she's proving that it can be done. Uh, the, she, she's not letting them uh, rewrite the bill or anything. She's, make, she's making them... If it go, if it passes, it passes in its grossest form. Because you know how they how they alter right. the bills so that they, so that you'll counter with something softer. They'll give you something like horrendous, so you'll be right. more pliable. So no, she's not budging on that. It's beautiful. Her her, her name's uh, Kavanaugh, I believe. Um, but uh, I've been watching her antics, and it's freaking fantastic. I wish we'd see more people out there doing right. doing these things against the this, this kind of legislation and abortion legislation. Places where these uh, anti-trans anti-abortion uh, legislations are passing, they are uh, doctors and teachers are fleeing these states. Do- Florida can't can't mm. find teachers. Uh, Idaho doesn't have any doctors. It's mm. it's gross because they're passing these bills and those people people are afraid to work in those states. So Keep that in mind. I was going to use this time to shill my channel, but it's no. It's please, just, do, please, I, do, please do. Please do. Please do. Five side, but I'd rather push this public service announcement than uh, than shill my stuff. No, let uh, us know. Let us know your channel. Let us know your channel. Yeah, just uh, I do live from the Hive Saturday at nine thirty a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. We have a good time. We do Cryptic Corner, then we do Creation Watch, and then we do some some Hive Science. So if you're into any of that stuff please uh, feel free to swing on by. It's usually a fun time. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And please, uh, you know, if you're in one of these States that have, have these legislations and they still haven't voted on it, do what you can to, you know, to contact who you can contact a representative, let them know where you stand on it because there's not enough of us to tell to, to, to make these, to spread this message. There's not enough of us in the, in the community uh, anywhere in any, uh, as part of any, any community that, that, to to make any kind of impact by ourselves so uh i think that's an incredibly important point that uh we need to make sure we don't overlook that um that we have to help that that you don't have enough uh of of a population to do what needs to be done which why you need advocates to step up that's always been the case but it's especially the case with uh the trans community because the more the smaller of a percentage you are of the population right the more you need other people to step up to get you know sufficient critical mass of, of voices to make change happen one of the things i want to do on the channel is go through some of the laws that are being passed we have a spreadsheet where we're keeping track of that stephanie shared with us it's really an incredible resource because it's kind of disappointing how many there are in you know, I think people are going to be surprised that, of course, your state is on. Of course, your state is on there. They're they're everywhere. Um, Every but, state's on there. There's... Yeah, but also um, jumping into some of the language. There's too many of them to read all of them. But I I think people will realize how serious this is when you realize that Tucker Carlson talking points are now proposed legislation. Um, and, and that's another reason I feel like what we see seeing for Bob Price and Doug and people like that is so unacceptable, uh, because there's real shit happening right now. And it's, it's, it's not time to, to be playing these games. There's a line right now that's been drawn. You got to be on one side or the other at this point. History is being written right now. And every, every other step of the civil rights movement that we've made so far, have they ever, have you people ever been on the right side? So <laughs> this is your chance. This is your right, fucking seriously. chance to to try just just this once. Prove prove the historians wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. Let every Stephanie single... have a word too. <laughs> yeah. James, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. I wanted you to get your word in too. No, I was just gonna echo what you're saying. That every single chapter in history, the the far right has been on the wrong side of history every single time yep. right yeah. and, and it's just like wouldn't you guys like to be on the the winning side yeah. and the ethical side and the progressive progressing side of history just fucking once 
Because then they would have to stop. Then they could have to stop. They could stop rehabbing to rewrite it all the time and do all this. Yeah. Because they're gonna oh, have to. That's they're such gonna a good re- point. They're gonna have to rewrite what they're doing right now. That's such a good years point. Down the road. They are. They yeah. are. Yeah, they always do that. They pretend like they were they were on the winning side the whole time and. Like, oh, you weren't. That is such a a fantastic (laughs) point. If they would just get on the right side of history for once, they they could literally (laughs) not have to rewrite it. Oh my goodness, Mm. Stephanie, where are you at with this stuff? Well, I think I've I've worn out my voice on this. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) but but uh, please don't hurt yourself. I won't. I won't get tired. I won't get tired of fighting. I won't get tired of trying. I won't be. I won't get tired of being awoke. I won't get tired of sure. of uh, of doing the shit I've done since I was marching in the streets of DC in 1969 against the Vietnam War. I, mm-hmm. I, it, 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 but but here's the thing: the struggle continues. It will always continue. But what I'm seeing today is echoes of the John Birch Society, echoes of of uh, of, of the horrors uh, that were. Uh, that that were the AIDS epidemic, the, the horrors that were uh, police violence against trans people in and at the Compton Cafeteria in San Francisco in 1966, and in Stonewall two years later. Uh, it, it's it's this. These are struggles that um, we did fight. We did accomplish uh, some things, but we're being faced with it again. And uh, that convinces me that uh, these uh, the the strains towards uh, the strain in in human hearts towards fear and and loathing to, to use Hunter S. Thompson's phrase uh, are strong and they're not easily extinguished and every generation has to fight them. In, hand in hand with mm. those who've gone before and mm. those who mm-hmm. those who fought yeah. these struggles, yeah, and understand that it's it 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 it's not gonna be easy. It is gonna take hard work, especially when, uh, you know, when you see the progress of the past forty years of row, fifty years of row. Uh, be rolled rolled back in, in with a stroke of a pen. I mean that was a big deal, it's a big deal. I remember when abortion was illegal in Massachusetts, and when a girl went to New York, that was why in high school. Mm. Where is she? She's in New York. Oh, I mean Wasn't it's not like trip. people yeah. suddenly. You know, it's the same it, it, through so many of these things, whether it's whether it's civil rights whether it's gay rights, whether it's women's rights, so many of these things, people seem to think that these questions came up yesterday. But they didn't. Mm. They didn't come up yesterday. Women began been getting pregnant since like a long time. A long, long <laughs> yeah. time. Issues around issues around uh, is abortion mm. moral, legal, et cetera, and so forth is yeah. biblical it's in the fucking bible mm-hmm. yeah ever since humanity started six thousand years ago <laughs> so so you know but we're we all have it's 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 a part of life it's this this struggle towards a better life for people a struggle to preserve the planet which we're so intent on choking which is another which is another doctrine that that spills out of have domination over all you see that mm. comes from that comes from christian tradition as well that is that, you can that, call it christian kink it's okay i could call it christian kink but again all of these things it, it's it's on and on and on and you can't let up eyes on the prize yeah all right so i'll i'll go ahead and then i'll let i'll let james finish this up but uh I um one thank James for hosting this with me. That's super dope, and uh, thank everybody that's um, spoken up on the panel. Definitely want to thank Derek for doing this. I was really hurt by this whole thing. You know, I I I think um, you know I, I to be honest, I kind of lean historicist these days. But setting that aside, 
mythicism was kind of like a big deal for me in terms of getting into this community, getting in terms of the scholars into this community. Um, I was a big Bob Price fan, big Derek fan. And realizing that Bob Price had these views, the things he said, they hit deep. Uh, that was really the first week that we did hot program. And we talked about it on that show's very first hot program. Um, but I remember even in discord with some people talking about it, it really was like having blinders pulled off my eyes or something. Um, and it's been a long journey since then. Um, because I think that was the beginning of the journey with Doug, you know, Doug continued to make his problematic content. That whole situation escalated. I still feel like there are people in our community uh, supporting and enabling Doug and ignoring the the, the damage and the, the destructive content he makes, and, and that's really problematic. But I almost got to a point where I just wanted to, like, Superman those people away. Is I didn't know what to do with the, do about it anymore. It's just super frustrating, so... I really do appreciate Derek kind of stepping up to the plate and letting us know where he stands. I think people know where I stand and, you know, we just got to keep going. Um, but yeah, it hurts. Uh, I'm, you know, a lot of, you know, I, you know, I, I work from home. I stay at home. I don't, I have not started living a post COVID life, whatever that means. Um, so I've been, impacted by it and it hurts when i hear people trivialize it you, you know we've we've lived through a pandemic we're living through a war the war in ukraine and we don't know what the escalation of that will entail for the rest of the world we've lived through an insurrection on american soil all within a few years of each other and it's crazy to me that people so brazenly and openly, you know, disregard these things. I, I like to say, um, you know, th there's like this cliche that you should live in interesting times. I actually think I would tell whoever said that, but not too interesting, right? Like, when you, when you start living through a wars and pandemics and insurrections, like the times you're living in are too interesting. There's a little bit too much going on. I, I would prefer a little bit, you know, let's turn it from like a 12 back down to like a three or four. Just enough interest to keep me awake, but not so many that we're literally dealing with existential crisis constantly. Not to mention global warming and, um, you know, all these hate in bigotry movements, having our rights taken away. It, this is just not a game anymore. Um, and yeah, I, I really do feel affected by these things. And sometimes I don't even want to talk about it because you really feel like people just don't care. Like they just don't care. Oh, you're just on the left. Oh, you're just, you know, you're a liberal, you're a Democrat, you're woke or whatever it is. And it's like, no, I'm hurting, and so are the people around me, and you're a fucking asshole if you think this is just about politics, you know? And there's just, there's so few opportunities to really say what is really going on and say what really needs to be said in all this. So, yeah, I, I don't know, you know, this, this would be the stream that never ended if we really got into everything, but I do feel very strongly about these issues um, I also feel a certain degree of responsibility to address these things because, you know, Chrissy and I were pulled in to accept Robert Price's apology. That didn't go well. I think that caused some discomfort in some of these wounds to be reopened for people. Um, you know, I, I feel bad for any role I, you know, inadvertently pay, p played in all of that. And so it was important to me to address it since then. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's going to do it for me, but, uh, really, really important stuff. And, and definitely thanks to Derek for doing this video and, uh, thanks to everybody else for, uh, appearing and doing the show with me. And I'm gonna let, uh, James close us out.
since he's co the co-host with me. I appreciate it, everyone. And thank you very much, Jay. Um, I, I haven't been following my... Because I'm restreaming this in my channel as well. Yeah, I've been and, watching your chat. Maybe you've been watching mine or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I've been watching yours and you've been watching mine. I just now, <laughs> I just now noticed mine. And holy crap, I am so sorry, guys. Thank you for whoever eventually put that guy on timeout. That's not okay. Apparently, Faithful is somebody that yeah, made we've... it. Yeah, that's uh, they're new to me, but I'm catching up now. <laughs> like, oh crap. So I wish we had time for that. I'll make time for that to talk about Faithful Theologies. Um, bullshit, but not tonight. So in the meantime, I just want to say that I am, I'm worried about a lot of these things, um, especially the, the, the book, man, because look, there is this book that I think is interesting. And the, the lead character is a dad who doesn't have like male anatomy, but he identifies as male. And he's got this son. Now the dad is like the super far right, ultra fascist conservative, but the son is this liberal communal socialist guy with severely unresolved daddy issues. And he happens to be a closeted queer, you know, like kind of a transsexual. He doesn't want to really talk about exactly what's going on, but he, he, he sure. lives in a society that just wouldn't accept him for who he is. And the whole time he's going through this struggle, he's dealing with mental illness and he's dealing with living in a society that wouldn't accept him for who he is. And so he has to just, you know, kind of keep it on the down low. And he's trying to figure out how to harmonize his very left leaning progressive ideas with his father's far right conservative stuff. Cause he wants to, you know, get in good with his dad and be accepted because, like that's just the one thing that he lives for and um he ends up he ends up losing a battle with a mental illness and he ends up uh committing suicide by cop and so i would really really hate it. there's so much interesting stuff in that book i would hate to see bibles banned suicide by cop <laughs> oh, <my God>. uh, <laughs> suicide by cop that is that is that is legit oh, yeah yeah, yeah. i want to find something like me you me and you disagree about he was it, you know he was struggling <laughs> the only people that understood him was his 12 male friends and he he just never connected with women the way uh right. <laughs> Very yeah. well played, Jay. Very well played. Very well played, James. As well. oh, Very well yeah. played. He uh, only found that comfort in the arms of prostitutes. Is that right? <laughs> well, everybody was pretty sure there's no way he did anything with her because wink, wink, nod, nod. That's not his. He doesn't swing that. Nerd <laughs> yeah, right, right. They're just they're I mean, very he, confident that, that his dad that, that, does, but his dad has a taste for the yeah. uh, the young yeah, ones. Yeah. <laughs> Like to hang out, like versions. to hang out with with uh, foreigners. Oh yeah. man! His, his dad is in the child bride. He's like, why aren't you taking a child bride? He's like, I like my homies, okay. And he's like, no. Yeah, Derek, Derek, this this stream confirms you're in with those woke leftist anti-Christian mobs. All right, look, y'all, let's get up out of here. Uh, the link is pinned in the chat. Also, the link is down in the description. Uh, come join us and gather. Come hang out. Uh, we'll be in here overnight, as always. Uh, otherwise, we will see you next time. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. She don't know I tried my all She don't know I sprung in the sun But I'm going in the winter So we good to the fall Remember how I told you I get it and I win Now I'm got it You ain't answering my call Wonder if I been moving too strong Maybe I just been moving too boss Really hate when the feeling get lost Nowadays she just dodge my calls And the game don't lose like Paul Young legend Miss John like Wall And I wish you never met like Carl Thick game laid down like law Made plans but you cancel them all I was just trying to splurge in the mall Now I'm home stacking bread till you call It's time to roll she trying to slide, we smoking za. Stop back and shy. Cause you a demon when I get between your thighs, girl. You like my rib, you know I need you by my side, girl. It's time to roll. She trying to ride, we smoking. Stop back and shy. Cause you a demon.